Anyway, March 22nd, 9.14 p.m., Gatewater Hotel, Caritas Hotel Room. It's past 9 p.m. already, isn't it? I wonder. I wonder if Mr. Edgeworth has already found Mystic Maya. These things take time. I'd say probably not. These are professionals, Pearls. The finders, so don't you worry. If we can win an, a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. You're right. I don't... I don't want to talk to her, but I guess we'll talk to her. The real killer. So the real person who killed Mr. Karita was... That assassin! Mr. Shelley to kill her, right? And the card Miss Andrews found at the crime scene seems to be proof of that. But if that's the case, then a new question comes to mind. Who is the one that hired to kill her to begin with? Who is this client? Oh boy, chat. Phoenix is trying to catch up to the plot. I'm pretty sure I guessed the entirety of this case already. <laughs> like, we just gotta let the game slowly puzzle it out who did it. You mean, who asked for the murder? That person didn't want it to dirty their own hands and blood. But whoever the, this client is, they're still a killer. I mean, I would think with just the bear alone, like, let's say you let's say you had no assumptions of the case. If it was a rich person, basically, essentially, that potentially delivered that bear because it's rare, wouldn't you just automatically assume it's the person we're defending? Like, why would we even need to do more investigation? Yeah, that feels really weird. Do you know what I mean? Like, that was kind of a plot point. They're like, oh, you, we shouldn't be looking at who potentially could put it in the bear, but who could have sent the bear in the first place? I think it's what they mentioned earlier. Anyway, the assassin's client. Who? Who could have hired the assassin? You think it was Miss Andrews? No. I wonder. But if she was the client, then why go through the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? But if Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then no, it can't be. Matt on guard himself? Was it Matt? Oh my gosh, chat, seriously? <laughs> chat, I feel like I feel like I should hit this and then and then and then Mia comes out and goes, yes, Phoenix, it's obviously Matt on guard. Please go to trial. <laughs> Was it Matt? Mr. On guard really did hire the assassin. Then he's not innocent at all. Far from it, he would be guilty of the crime. But it can't be Mr. Ungard, right? I mean, when we first talked with him. No. We talked about this before. We asked him if he killed the person, to which he said no, which is true, somebody else killed him. No, 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 no. Don't try to bring this up as like, uh, this is an impossible scenario. I'm not falling for this. I'm waving my finger. I know what you tried to do. That is beneath me. <laughs> like, listen, simple, simple puzzles, moving on the floor, wild arms, you could trip me up. This? No, 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 no. You're not gonna, you're not gonna outlogic me on this one. Nice try, though, Phoenix. Did you kill Mr. Juan Carradine? No, he hired the killer. If he says no, he wouldn't be lying. Especially if he doesn't view it as murder, if he does it indirectly. <laughs> right, chat? Then that makes even more sense why the locks didn't come up, because he doesn't feel guilty over that. Alright, just so we're clear, dude, I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Corrida, right? Yeah, and we saw no Psylocks, blah blah blah. Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah. Something Miss Andrews said at the trial today. She said something interesting. Something interesting. Um, so what is this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you, Pearls? Juan had bet everything on the Jam and Ninja this year, and if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with them. That's what he thought, anyway. Looks like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Mr. Ungard's secret? What is this secret? I don't know yet. But for now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Carter was going to reveal this secret. Hmm. That means... Hmm. Mr. Ungard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Carter silenced. Which means we have to meet with Mr. Ungard. There's no way around it now. 
Okay, let's go to the hallway. March 22nd, get with our hotel hallway. Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9 p.m. already. But we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. There's still the matter of this secret Mr. Carter held about Matt on guard. Miss Andrew's real intentions. These are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the detention center? Hmm. Sure we'll think of something, Pearls. Don't you worry. Okay. March 22nd, Goodwater Hotel, Viola Hall. Ugh. <laughs> I feel like existential dread, Chad, every time I see this character. Start playing, like, final boss music. I just... I just have to get through, like, two more joke characters. We're so close. I can do it. Deep breath. She's not just even more annoying than she was in the first game. And she was barely tolerable in the first game. This game is really pushing it. I don't like her gimmick in this at all. Hey, wait. What is it, whippersnapper? All I know is nothing has anything to do with you is ever good. Like just now, I was handed this strange device for whoever knows what reason. I was told to use it to search the whole hotel. That's the bug sweeper, isn't it? The one Gumshoe made. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care, but the request came from Edgy Poo, so... Edgeworth? And he said... We feel angry. Direct your anger at that unsophisticated lawyer. So I'm gonna feel free to direct all my anger towards you. Ah, oh, gee, thanks a bundle, Edgeworth. What a pal you are. I'll begrudgingly talk to her about the bug sweeper. This is absolutely top secret, so you better keep it to yourselves. But they found a spy camera hidden in one of the presents. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm sure it was, you know. It was to catch poor Juan in the middle of a scandalous meeting. Nope. Scandalous? What's that? It means, well, you know. That gossip gossip's that's been going around around my dear Juan. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews? And I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Corrida. Let you in on another secret, youngin. I know who planted that spy camera. It was that obnoxious puppy-haired photographer girl. The nerve of some people. Spying on people by herself. As if I wouldn't want to see it for myself, too. Wow. Alien actually admitted her true intentions for a change. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet that it's nothing good. But I didn't say anything. Juan and Adrian. So you want to know about Juan? And that manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, they were something of a refreshing pair, those two. Oh? I tell you, Juan really welcomed that manager with open arms, I heard. That manager? Who are you talking about? You don't know? That manager woman Juan had. It's a shame she killed herself, though. Oh, you're talking about Miss Celeste Impacts. Is her name a pun on Rest in Peace? I was looking at that for a while, and I'm like kind of breaking it down word for word. Isn't it, doesn't it, if you were to translate it literally, I think it's like Heavenly Rest. Chat can fact check me in real time. I feel like that's a Rest in Peace pun. Anyway, Miss Andrew's mentor, right? Yes, yes, that's the one. That's Celeste girl. She was supposed to get married, you know. But married? You mean to Miss Corrida? Oh, excuse me, to Mr. Corrida? Ah, oh, really? You young kids say they don't know anything, do you? That girl Celeste killed herself three days after their marriage announcement. Three days after their marriage announcement? What in the... Celeste suicide? Why would Miss Impacts want to kill herself? She's gonna get married! Well, that's because... She was thrown away, you see, by Juan. What? Give me a second chat. But, but they were going to get married, right? They promised each other, right? Held a grand announcement session, but... Three days later, 
Juan suddenly canceled their marriage. I is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. But, but why? Why did he do that? It was not in the magazines, unfortunately. I see. That night after Juan called off the wedding, that manager Celeste killed herself. Ooh, feeling thirsty. How terrible. I wonder what happened between those two. Okay, and let's go to the lobby. March 22nd, we're in the lobby. On that night, there must have been at least 100 people here. Hmm. Guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. Looks like things here in the lobby have finally calmed down. Okay, so we have to go back to... Okay, go back to the living room for some reason. What happens if I go here? A guard mansion living room. Looks like no one's around. Um, what happened to that person with the stuffed teddy face? Oh, she must mean the butler with the stitches in his head. Shu! Shu meows. Oh, there you are. Guess you're still awake, huh, Shu? Well, how about we just broke into their house again for no reason? E come on, let's play! I wonder if that butler, Mr. Doe, is already asleep or not. Anyway, we'll just ignore that. Go to the law offices. March 22nd, right in company law offices. Doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective is here. Well, he's out there with the camera asking around at all the electronics stores. And I'll make some salad for dinner. For him. Looks like Pearls really appreciates what Gumshoe's doing for us. Um, Mr. Nick? Hmm? Yes? Where is the lettuce? I don't think I've ever bought lettuce before. Oh, I guess I have to give up on making a salad then. Yes, the lack of lettuce is kind of a problem. Now let's go to the detention center. March 22nd detention center visitor's room. Visiting hours ended a few hours ago. Looks like we're not going to get a chance to talk with Mr. Ungard tonight. But, but, isn't that what we have to ask very important? Yeah, but I don't think that matters to the guard. Um... So, what do you want me to do then? Question mark? Right, chat? Oh, okay. I guess I'll go back to the Criminal Affairs Department. Feels sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. You're Mr. On God's lawyer, right? Ah, oh, yes, sir. Well, we finally found just the person we've been looking for. A real decisive witness. Decisive witness? You mean from the Unguard case? We're taking the witness statements right now. Gotta hand it to Mr. Edgeworth. What's Edgeworth up to now? Who is this witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. M Mr. Nick? Between the kidnappers, the man, and now this. Can't see any way to win here. Oh yeah, Mr. Edgeworth wanted me to tell you something. He did? Even though visiting hours are long over at the detention center, he wanted me to grant you special permission, so there you go. Oh. I'm just gonna roll my eyes, I was just there. What? I've already called them, so they know. Go on, talk to your heart's content. Thank you very much. This is such good news, Nick. Go talk to your heart's content. Sounds like the police are pretty sure they have the tomorrow's trial in the bag. March 22nd, detention center, visitor's room. Hmm. I'm sure they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. That means that both Mr. On Guard and Miss Andrews are in the detention center. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? The game has been pushing Matt on guard, but... I feel like we'll get more evidence first from Adrian Andrews. Like, I feel like we have to kind of set up and entrap Matt on guard to get him to admit he's lying. He could give us a piece that we need to then bring to Adrian Andrews, but I think I'm going to lead towards Adrian Andrews first. See if I can get more info. Oh, it's you. Sorry to be visiting at such a late hour. But there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? But your client was Matt. 
I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. Can't be clueless about this secret Mr. Corvette had on Mr. Ungard. Uh, let's talk one at a time. Mount Ungard. I'd like to ask you about Mount Ungard, if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? The real him, I mean. Seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. Ungard. If that's the case, why did you become his manager? And why would you become intimate with his rival? Because she wants to bring both down? Question mark. Dot dot dot. That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. Celeste Impacts. About Miss Celeste Impacts. I finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. I... I'm sorry. Yes, I was shocked by her suicide. And it's true that when I heard the rumor that Juan was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I wanted to get her suicide note back, and to burn it. You wanted to burn it? But why? I didn't want it to spread like just another piece of gossip. But I never held any murderous intent towards Juan. I would never do something so stupid. Suicide note, huh? Wonder what it said. Why frame him has been added? Let's ask that. Why did you try to frame Mr. Ungard? That's simple. Because he's the killer, that's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? But there had to be another way. Oh, I guess we never really talked about it. Who do we think the decisive witness is? Um... I imagine we're eventually going to get the butler on the stand, but I think their witness is probably... <sighs> Maybe it's Matt Powers? I don't think there's any other named people that haven't come up, or it could be Lotta Hart, but I'm leaning more towards Matt Powers. Since Lotta Hart has already come up a couple times. Indirectly. I'm not sure what he would be reporting specifically, but I guess we'll get to that point. Will Powers or a lot of hair, yeah, pretty much. The police are excellent at doing their job, so they figure it out, right? Oh, Phoenix. Have you seen your universe? Everybody's incompetent, including you in the justice system. Yes, they're so good that they couldn't figure out the real truth behind Celeste's death. Miss Andrews? Well, um... I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason. So please, tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. Huh? Did you say something just now? One lock. Side lock, huh? Don't you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To be honest, you're more like my enemy. But... I'm sure I just heard Miss Andrews say, Revenge. go back to the criminal department to see if we're allowed to switch witnesses or how they're going to deal with it. Police Station Criminal Affairs Department. Oh, Mr. Wright, please, you have to help me. Uh-oh. Mr. Powers! What happened? Why are you here? Well, I guess that confirmed who it is. I, uh, you see, I got roped into this somehow. What? And now I'm going to testify at tomorrow's trial. So the decisive witness is Mr. Powers? I was talking with the detective until a little while ago, and I was on my way home. When all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest. And I was brought back here. Uh, oh. You said my face and whole self in general look suspicious or something. Hmm. Well, I guess you could see how they thought you looked suspicious. Oh, I'm just a normal guy. On an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? So we'll talk to him briefly about tomorrow's testimony. So, about this testimony you're giving, 
What are you going to talk about? I really don't know yet. But it sounded like I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. Saw something important? What was it? Oh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. You can't tell anyone, especially not that lawyer, he said. Who do you think is that lawyer the detective was talking about? Oof. Oof. This is why we need a real assistant, chat. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say it's me. Yeah, you got it. Mr. Nick, Mystic Maya and myself are your only two allies in this whole world, but it's alright. Ouch. I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? Yeah, what happened to Larry Butts? <laughs> Rip Larry, I guess, in this game. Not on guard. This is gonna do a lot of damage to Matt, you know. Because he's got that refreshing like a spring breeze image going. But what is he really like? Well, let's see. Matt's always been kind of a player with women. He would never really turn down a pretty face, if you know what I mean. He'd always say, it's just a game to justify himself. What? How horrible! That's unforgivable! Ow. Sorry. Didn't mean to offend you. But you know, he said that once. That there's only one person in the world who won't swoon over me. One person who wouldn't swoon over him. His manager, you know. Miss Adrian Andrews. Why is Mr. Power suddenly looking kind of... energetic? Gossip? Ah, oh, you see, I'm actually a sucker for gossip. I mean, celebrities in their world have this dazzling sort of image, right? Dazzling sort of image? But aren't you part of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? No, I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, brutish kind of guy, you see. But it's okay, really. I get to hear plenty of gossip about lots of other stars around me as things happen. Well, uh, that's true. Oh, hey, uh, so did you hear about this yet? I met Miss Andrews' mentor in her suicide. You mean Miss Impacts? We heard something about how her wedding was cancelled. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Thought about it a little the other day. About that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright. Why did you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Mr. Powers is so charged up, his skin is... Practically glowing with electricity. Uh-oh, did he turn into, like, a Raichu? <laughs> Given his color scheme? Let's ask about her suicide. Hey, so have you heard this? So let's lift... A suicide note. And they say that Juan went and hid it. We heard about that in court today. There wasn't any actual proof she had left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Juan, that is. Something bad for Mr. Carida? Why do you figure so? Well, before she died, so let's talk with a few of her friends. She said, it looked like I got caught up with a truly insidious man. A truly insidious man. Did she mean Mr. Karita by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? That would be the reason enough for her for him to hide the suicide note. I see. Well, that's some good info. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Ungard and Miss Andrews. They're both at the detention center right now. There's still things I don't understand or know about, I'm sure. I have to get the two of them to tell me everything. Well, I didn't get anything from her. Let's go back to Matt on guard and see if we could advance the story here. Dude, it's Mr. Wright. Hope you could get me off the hook tomorrow. I'm counting on you. I hope so too. Edgeworth just dropped a bombshell on me by saying, And Juan Carta was killed by an assassin, and that the assassin's client is dot dot dot. This man, mad on guard. Then, then, why were we? Why did we wait? So, so we're acknowledging the bombshell from the previous session, but we didn't acknowledge it at the beginning of the session for some reason. Why are we bringing it up here and not when we were talking about the bear? Whatever. What's wrong? Mr. On Guard, 
There's something I must know with 100% certainty. Hmm, you seem kind of different. Totally not like your usual lawyer dude self. Let's ask him about Matt's secret. Um, about the press conference. You mean the one where Mr. Wuhan was going to dress up as the Nickel Samurai? Yeah. I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. Looked like somehow... Wan had it, his hands on a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Did we really flash back to the same sentence within 10 minutes? <laughs> Am I hallucinating? Didn't I just read? Like, it's one thing that it happened last session and maybe they're recapping for people that took a break, but like, this just happened. Check the tapes. <laughs> Go rewind it. I am 100% certain I just voiced this line earlier. Would you please fill me in on what this secret is, please? Welcome, Dango. Oh boy. The quintuple lock. I knew this was coming. Mr. Nick, don't tell me. Psylocke's. He's a big X-Men fan. He's got Psylocke everywhere, Chad. It's terrible. You said a secret, right? But I don't have any idea what it is. Do you, dude? Juan and Adrian will ask about that. You know about Mr. Carta and Miss Andrew's relationship? Well, it's all over the tabloids, dude. Oh, but I don't know any of the details, if that's what you mean. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I don't care what Juan did with his life. Miss Andrews, she had a purpose in mind when she started seeing Mr. Corrida. Her mentor was Mr. Corrida's manager. Oh, wrong person speaking. Blah, blah, blah. So Phoenix is saying that they're the manager and Miss Andrews was going to get Miss Celeste Impact's suicide note from him. Celeste? Does that jog any memories? He dot dot dots. Dude, I suddenly just got totally hungry. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's bad enough he's doing the dude. He's giving me, like, stoner vibes again for some reason. You up for a pizza? My treat. Dot dot dot. Um, Mr. Nick? What's a pizza? Is it a kind of pea? Like green peas? Let's go eat one later, okay? Ugh, I got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop. That's too bad. Well, how about we get our minds off this topic and talk about something else, okay? Mr. On Guard, are you connected to Miss Impact Suicide in some way? Yes. <laughs> right, chat? Chat. Yes. <laughs> Where he sees slowly getting there, chat. So let me check what evidence we have on us. Can we press him at this point? Oh, we don't have any of the stuff we got in the last one here. So we can't ask him about the spy camera until uh, Gumshoe comes back. I guess for the sake of chat, I will flash up my badge for no reason. Let's present our badge. Can you please take a look at this? I know it might not seem important to you. Well, if it's not important, I'd rather be in bed. Don't get my 12 hours of beauty sleep. My skin's gonna wrinkle up like a prune, dude. You know, he's right, Mr. Nick. My skin's kind of drying up here and there. I swear. After this case is over, I'm gonna get lots and lots of sleep. So I guess we go back to the LOL office where Gumshoe will come back and give us something to then come back to on guard. Since we got nothing between both discussions of the two characters. So we're back in the LOL office or LOL offices as the phone goes off. Mr. Nick, your phone! I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. I also love how that it's supposed to be 9 p.m. chat and they're using like the daylight scene. Big, big oof. See, this is why he's confused and disoriented. Reminder chat, it is 9 p.m. in universe and it looks like the sun is out. So apparently it's just hell on earth there. <laughs> the sun never sets. Dango says the man is such a deep negative brain cell score, it's robbing Andrews of hers. It's true. Sounds kind of ominous. Probably just your imagination. You should really pick it up, Mr. Nick. It could be important. Beep. Hello? We got a problem, pal. What's wrong? I'm on my way to your office right now. Uh, okay. Hey, wait a second. Why is he coming here? It's terrible. I don't know what to say, pal. I think it's the end. Oh, I got here faster than I thought. 
Um, hey. Beep. No time to relax now, pal. I'm confused as anything here. Well, what happened? We got him! We know who bought that spy camera! Huh? Uh, this quickly? And this bear is what gave him away, pal. The bear. I figured it out, pal. I figured that we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera. Yep, that happened last time. Um, but wasn't it Mr. Edgeworth? Shh, pearls. And, go on. There's only one person who bought one of these bears who was related to this crime. Who is it? Who would be so rude as to spy on another person in their room? Mad on guard. Huh? Man on guard, your client, that's who, pal. And here I thought things couldn't get any worse. I mean, isn't that what... Why are, why are we treating this like new information, chat? I, I I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Edgeworth is like, Phoenix, you're really stupid. I looked into this. Here's the evidence. This is the person who got the bear. It's definitely your client. And then we're like, I wonder who it is. It could be anybody. It could even be our client. And then we go to our client and go, hmm, it could be anybody. Edgeworth said it could it could be you, but who else could it be if not you? And then we come here and they're like, hey, we think it's the bear again. I feel like I'm in like Groundhog Day. Like what's happening with the dialogue here? Hopefully Phoenix stops questioning whether or not that it's him or not and we can move past this plot point. This is like the fourth person in just this session alone that has brought up that it's been him. And it hasn't really been an open question. There's no other red herring characters. Like even in universe, who else would we have thought it would be if not him? It's crazy. Guess I'll talk to him. Stuff bear. You sure you heard right? The person who bought this bear was... You heard it from the department store clerk, pal. <laughs> it wasn't Matt on guard, it was Matt on guard, trademark. You're right. You're right, Dango. Good call. This is the credit card receipt for the purchase. It's for 3800 pal. That's an exact match to the price of that stuffed bear. A receipt? That's all you have? When is the, re when is the receipt not good enough for this? Nah, it's not just the receipt, pal. The store clerk said so himself. He told me I'm sure I sold the bear to Mr. Ungard. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Ungard's autograph out of it, pal. So I'm sure the person that bought the stuffed bear was Mr. Ungard himself. My, my sight is failing. This can't be. We are in like the hardest case of denial right now, chat. I was gonna- I was actually about to comment about that, Dango. I'm like, I'm like, are we sure he didn't just charge by, like, credit card or something? Like, I- I don't- like, if he paid by credit card and he had to sign off on it, would he have the signature? Anyway. Check also works, too. Credit card receipt added to the court record. Receipt for 3,800. Proof on guard bought a stuffed bear identical to the one in evidence. Spy camera. So what about the spy camera we found? Oh, that was a dead end, pal. I mean, you get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I could give these back to you for to file away into evidence. Okay, now I think we could go back to Matt on guard and maybe make progress. And then maybe we go back to Miss Andrews, maybe? A little bit of the inverse, but I don't think it really mattered which order we talked to them. Spy camera set to record the victim's room from 8 p.m. for one hour was running a time murder. Spy camera transmitter and stuff bear refiled into court record. No, you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought. I didn't think it was possible. What, you didn't think it was possible your client was a criminal? You're a lawyer, Phoenix. What do you think lawyers do? The spy camera is irrelevant because it's not a bear. That's also true. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Carrera's room was mad on guard. Why? Why would Mr. Ungard do something like this? I bet it was to catch Miss Andrews and Mr. Carradin one of their rendezvous. No. <laughs> right, chat? Wrong! <laughs> I bet it's not good enough for me. I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Oh, are we finally going to realize Edgeworth has been tr telling us to uh, seek the absolute truth? Or are we not going to have that revelation until the actual trial? Let's find out, chat. Are you going to see him? Mr. On Guard, I mean. Nope. Nope, we didn't pick up on that. Phoenix missing the bus again. He'll, he'll have to wait for another one to swing by and take him to his destination. Yes. 
I'm I'm scared, Mr. Nick. I wonder I wonder what we'll find out next. Dango saying, I bet isn't good enough, huh? And absolutely no questions asked isn't good enough either, right? I mean, I feel like we've gone further with I bet or I think so. So I don't know. I feel like Phoenix is being very hypocritical right now, to be honest with you. I'm scared myself, but I have to put on a good face for pearls. Why are you scared? What? F Phoenix, I... Did you not accept the fact that you might have to contend with criminals on your side? Like, it's just kind of sad if you think about it. How did he how did he get through like a bar exam in this world and not think this would happen at some point? What madness. Man on guard. What in the world have you done? Well, he hired he hired the assassin. We we talked about this, Phoenix. Everybody's told you this at this point. Working real late, you know. It's already past 10 p.m., dude. I think it's time you told me the truth. Relax. Don't you know that in ignorance is bliss? Oh, no. But if you really want to talk, let's talk. All uh, right, well, I'll present the Magatama. Take that. So let's see how we could get him to admit it. We have to get through five Psylocks, so we're probably going to need at least five pieces of evidence. We did get back at least three. Three, and we might have to present profile photos for the rest. We'll see. Matt's secret. Now, let's hear what this secret of yours is. Wouldn't Mr. Kurita have been successful in his plan? What would he have discussed? I told you before, dude. I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Look, Mr. Wright. Can't keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but... I totally didn't pay Juan any attention that whole night. I mean, come on, I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me. Huh? I know you paid close attention to Mr. Karate, especially on that night. So I guess I'm just gonna present the spy camera. Take that! Take that. Someone used this camera to secretly film Mr. Karate's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What? And then sent the images the camera took with this transmitter. Wow, dude, but where was this camera you're talking about hidden? Uh, the stuffed bear. Take that. The spy camera was hidden in this bear's eye. The bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. Hmm. This one had a few of those kinds of fans too, d huh, dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Hmm? You sure, dude? Who else could it be from? The person who gave the bear was... I mean, it's gonna be you. It's gonna point you on this one. Take that. Hello... Kite May Wilder? No poke catch on this stream for you, sadly. But hope you're doing well. Mr. On Guard, don't you know this b bear from somewhere? I don't think I've ever met Mr. Bear before, dude. Aw, oh, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? Okay, that, that made me smile a little bit. Phoenix getting a little sassy with him there, finally. What else did the bear tell you? <laughs> what? That's quite a reply to that. He says the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. On Guard. If I didn't know how... Oh, excuse me. If I didn't know how you work in court, I think I was in some serious trouble. Wow! <laughs> I love that. <laughs> He is calling us out. You know what? You could take that statement in many ways. I choose to think of the most insulting one for that. <laughs> I like to think that it's supposed to be... I think I know what they mean, but I like to read it more as we're so incompetent that there's no way we can put him in serious trouble in the court. <laughs> that's how I choose to read that statement. I think there's another way you could interpret that, but that's just how I like to imagine that going. Come on, this is all a joke, right, dude? Just pulling my leg. Looks like you're not ready to give up your secret yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? Here's proof it was you who put the camera inside the bear. Well, I'm just going to use the credit card receipt. Take that, Take that chat. I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. On Guard. It's from when you bought that stuffed bear. Dude, all you can tell from this is I spent 3800 
Gotta go. I go to that department store all the time, okay? This 3800 This could be the toothbrush I brought that one time. A $3,800 toothbrush? It's ivory. It's got elephant hair for bristles. Oh, that's... I feel like that's a crime in and of itself. Chan, let's just lock him up for this. <laughs> right, Chan? Put him in jail for this one. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I hear admission? What's that? I hear admission? Jail. <laughs> Ew. Elephant hair. Is that what rich people use nowadays? Anyway, the store clerk clearly remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. Um, can I ask you one thing? Yes. You're my lawyer, right, dude? So if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like this? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Only a crime pretty sure you can find it set to yeah. I feel like that's pretty easily disprovable. Sounds like more stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? I mean, to be fair, every time we talk with Phoenix, it's always stupid lawyer talk. To be fair, that doesn't whittle it down on guard. Chat saying, time to get locked up for rare parts to an endangered species unless you get brew parts were procured prior to endangerment. I mean... When he spins these things, these things should be fairly easy to fact check. I guess the only reason why it's not instantly an out is only because we have this really artificial time limit set upon the uh, game's court system. Otherwise, this would be a very easy to dispro disprove lie in real time. No, not yet. I haven't asked why you set the camera up yet. And what your secret is. Of course, it would be strictly confidential. So, what are you going to do now? I'm going to find out what I want to know. Because I must. The reason you hid this camera in Mr. Carter's room and filmed it in secret is... I guess I just present the murderer's card directly. I'm gonna say take that on this one. What is this card? Maybe he doesn't know about this card. This is a certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly DeKiller. I'm sure you know of him, don't you? Shelly DeKiller? Th 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 that's ridiculous, dude. Why would I know some shady scumbag like him? Uh-oh. Why does he know he's a shady scumbag? Oops. Feel like he entrapped himself on that one. Really don't know him. Why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Um, this is it. I'm finally starting to get to the truth. I can't afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Matt on guard. Oh, I love how we can lose half of our bar here if I guess it correctly. Then why you know Mr. The Killer? It's because you're a star. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hero of justice? Okay, those options are kind of funny, but no, he's the client. Since you're the one who set up that camera, that means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So, how? How would you know something like that? It's because you're his client, that's why. You hired Shelly to kill her to assassinate Mr. Juan Carrera. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is... You... Matt on guard. Dot, 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 dot. Uh, here I was trying to be a good boy for you, dude. Thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought, anyway. M Mr. On guard. You really did hire? Hold on a sec. I'm going to consult myself, okay? What? <laughs> What? Parameter says half the bar, but the answer is so obvious you're gonna fail unless you misclick. That's true. Insult myself. Yeah, what indeed, Dango? What indeed? Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About time for what? I think it's time for. Wow, that went by way too quickly. I don't even know what that says. Oh, hello. I don't know what he said there. I don't think it was intended to auto advance there, which was awkward. I think he says, and now it's time for you to know the truth about me and Miss Andrews, I think is what he said, but there's not a way to view the past chat 
I don't think there is. I think later games add that. So if you miss dialogue, you could go back to it. But I don't recall a button doing that in this one. Oh, no, it's Madden Guard trademark. It's true. Yeah, sorry. I think uh, the stream elements is still down. It's It's been a very big problem since their update. I'll let you know, chat, when it's like 100% again. It has been super, super inconsistent with how it works since they made the update. And I did write a complaint, by the way, on it yesterday, because I did get very annoyed at it. How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm mad on guard. Oh, no. Unlock successful. Love the claw monger over his eyes. Matt's secret. Yeah, where did he get the quote-unquote drink? Kirk's thinking it's a cognac. I, yeah. <laughs> are, are we? <laughs> I love how earlier Phoenix is like, don't worry, the, fi the the police are really confident, or competent. They'll do their job, and then meanwhile, all this is happening right in front of us. Well done, Mr. Bright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really... So you really are Shelly the Killer's client? You didn't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, did you? What do you mean? And that woman, Adrian, was quite brave herself. Trying to stick the crime on me, I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is Juan is dead. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? That's... You're lying! Oh, what a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on, let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why did you hide the video camera and... He dot dot dots. A weakling soon believes the words of others. Just like that pathetic Adrian. He knew about Miss Andrew's secret? But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone. Least of all assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. And a superstar like me, what do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? And... and that's why? Yes, that's where the video comes in. He's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay. And even blackmail him if I want. That's right. The video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up, and I can. Get enough an answer for you, little girl. Motive for murder. Why? Why would you kill Mr. Carida? Because he was about to sling so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Blackmailing an assassin, anyone else thinks something is wrong with that? It seems very short-sighted indeed. Well, I guess we know how he's going to go. So we're going to reveal this in the trial, and he's essentially a dead man where he'll wish he was in jail because he'll technically probably get found not guilty, but then the killer might be loose and just kill him. So we're, we're going to end this man's career and life and reputation. <laughs> so it'll be like we hired the killer chat. <laughs> so we'll not be very different from that on guard at the end of that sense. Because I don't think we'll... Oh, I guess we'll see if we... If, how much we choose to reveal and whether he goes to jail or not immediately. I guess we'll see how far we get in the court. How screwed this guy is when we're done with the court trial. Anyway, back to Unguard gloating. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? <clears throat> Mr. Carter had been able to give it. And Mr. Unguard's secret would have... Ah, uh, well... It's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know. I had no interest in doing it, really. But bit by bit, it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. That's... That's how Mr. Carida ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. Real classy there, chat. 
put on a sweet, innocent face. <laughs> yeah, like his. People will swallow anything you feed them. Adrian fell for it. The assassin, too. Oh, and how can I forget? Is it gonna do dramatic music where it goes BONG? And it goes, you fell for it, too. Let's see if it happens. Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Oh, we got a ding versus a bong. I was close. Everyone all working their butts off for me, mad on guard. Aw, oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? Grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? I know, it's pretty close. <laughs> when we first met, I asked if you had killed one corridor. You answered very clearly you hadn't killed anyone. Hey now, I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that to kill her guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. Welcome, Ap Apple Kappa. Yeah, the reveal. You. You. You killed Mr. Corrida. <laughs> I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. Uh. Oh, but too bad. You can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? You could always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Oh, but you can't, can you? That would be the one thing you absolutely can't do. Mystic Maya. You wouldn't want me to test... Oh, excuse me. You wouldn't want to test a killer. He's a man of his word, or so I hear. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. You scoundrel. So if I were you, Mr. Wright, Esquire, I think I would give it my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. I feel like this twist would have been more meaningful if the build-up to this point wasn't so tedious. I I'll get you for this. <laughs> yeah, Guard is like, I see nothing, I hear nothing, I don't smell alcohol in the air. <laughs> Alright, chat. <laughs> just like he he is not confiscated a damn thing these people have brought into prison not a damn thing apple cap was saying if this is real life this entire combo would be jcs criminal psychology <laughs> something like that that's such a cliche phrase once it's something just like that if memory serves of course well we all know things how thi oh, excuse me we all know how things turned out for him don't we Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Maya. Maya. What am I supposed to do? Dot, dot, dot. And now? Now you finally found it. The starting line of this case, says Edgeworth. Edgeworth, I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. March 22nd, Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. Well, right. what are you going to do? You plan on changing your strategy. No! We can't do that. That's right. He's holding Maya hostage. What? What should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. M mr Edgeworth? Right. Only you could decide where to go from here. <laughs> well, chat, if it was me in control, I'd be like, bye, Maya. <laughs> right, chat? Oops. We got a confession. Send him to jail. One year ago, at that time, I truly didn't understand what a prosecutor was. Well, to be fair, Edgeworth, I don't think Phoenix knows what a lawyer is either. So I think this kind of makes sense that nobody understands what the, uh, what the justice system is all about. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Maya. I'm be, I'm be real with you. She's not even my favorite character that's been in a supporting role so far. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. <laughs> my turn? What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? I feel like this is something you probably should have figured out in law school. I'm just saying, like, this is supposed to be, like, a very emotionally deep moment where we have philosophically questioned our entire career, but, like, 
wouldn't years of thinking about this led you to a conclusion on this already? Why are we having this revelation now? Dango says, I'm sure the court doesn't know what law means, so I think we're all right. It's true. I don't even think they're following evidence law anymore. I'm pretty sure they're not. I think we violated it at least once in this case already, according to the game logic. Because I don't think we presented a piece of evidence that was approved by the police. Papa Capo says, to be fair, I do not think most lawyers have ever had to deal with their client uh, kidnapping a loved one. <laughs> evidence dot 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 law. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much on both counts. But at the same time, it's more like... He seems to be having more existential crisis over his client actually doing something wrong, which is kind of one of the potential expected outcomes of being a lawyer. You must find the answer, and you must find it on your own. Guess we'll ask about Man on Guard. I'm a lawyer, but to fight for someone who's clearly a killer... I mean... Uh, this, see, this is what I'm talking about, Apple Capo. I don't think he's questioning whether or not, you know, he's being forced to work for somebody he doesn't like. It's more he seems to be questioning, in general, somebody that has done this, regardless of why he's kidnapping. I feel like that's really stupid as a plot point. I, I do not emphasize, or not, I don't feel empathy towards this character. It kind of just shows how inexperienced he is and how much he shouldn't be dealing with criminal law. <laughs> I'm just saying. Man on guard. That man is really... Ugh! It doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Edgeworth coming in with truth. Dango says, I feel like this should have been something that happened in the first game when he was first starting out. Yeah, definitely sure. Apple Capo saying, yeah, I do wish that Phoenix Wright would do a case where your client is clearly guilty, but you're trying to get a plea deal rather than a simple not guilty. I mean, it's just kind of like one of those common things where exactly plea deals or, you know, having charges downgraded or certain charges dropped. I mean, obviously they don't want to go. They're trying to keep it simple from like a video game perspective, but at the same time, it just makes it look like a, it looks so big, even stupid. It look, oh, excuse me, let's rephrase this. He looks even stupider than I think he's supposed to be. I don't think he's supposed to be like a you know, font of wisdom or anything, but it's getting kind of embarrassing for him here. So big side of Phoenix on that one. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? Upper defense. But what exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? I mean, Phoenix, these are things you should have known by now. <laughs> I'm just saying. Ah, <sighs> ironic that you of all people should say such a thing. Thank you, Edgeworth. Isn't that exactly how you fought for your clients up until now? It is, Edgeworth. Thank you. Call Phoenix out. Call him out, chat. Uh, well, that may be true, but, but that's... Yeah, Edgeworth, give me that smug face. You earned it. Burn Phoenix at the stake for this one. That's because I believe my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get on guard and acquittal, that... That isn't a proper defense at all. I mean... I mean, would it be a caveat that we just have him found not guilty of murder, but m guilty of some other crime? I feel like there's a loophole here that's very easy to establish. But anyway, my situation. I became a lawyer because I thought... I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, chat. <laughs> just... <laughs> you, th you think a lawyer is going to make people happy? You chose the wrong line. <laughs> the wrong line of work. <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> oh my... Right, chat? No. <laughs> but ni nice try, I guess, Phoenix. I would dot 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 that pearl too. Yeah, what a world they live in. But, but when I look at the mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do. Right. Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. I love that he's having this very serious conversation with us and all I see is like the doll with its hands open, the blue badger. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's its hands are outstretched, like welcome me into your life. 
<laughs> like that my my gaze is looking there i'm not looking at edgeworth i'm just like wow it is just always staring unblinking at me isn't it <laughs> it judges me silently on the windowsill anyway let's go back to the conversation you want to save someone that's something easier said than done wouldn't you say that's you're a defense attorney you can't run away from that you can only fight it's all you can do why fight has now opened up. People like you and Francisca von Karma are always using all you have to pin me down. I mean, to be fair, she should be arrested by now. <laughs> she has broken so many walls so fragrantly, so flagrantly in court. When she is not whipping us, there's still additional crimes on top of that. She shouldn't even be a prosecutor. She's just absolutely ridiculous. You fight to the very end, even you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict. Wow. Wow, Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix up on the soapbox. <laughs> he he's still up. He's he's on his high horse on the soapbox right now. For a man I clearly know to be guilty. Francisca, she fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect win record. That's all. And. Isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed? You're so petty. Wow. I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you are mistaken. What are you? Thanks to you, and you sealed off my path to a perfect win record. I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. What? I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you'll find out on your own. Wow, we really are not picking up on the absolute truth comment that was made earlier. Okay, we're well, just gonna pretend that line wasn't said, I guess. Whatever. I have faith you will see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you will be powerless to change the ending of the story. Oh, actually, that reminds me. We do have one achievement to go for. So I'm going to make sure to save before we go for that achievement. Because I'm not sure what that'll do if I purposely... We have to basically fail the trial on purpose, by the way, is how we get another achievement. So we're, we're going to leave that for a little later. Beep, 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 chat. Mr. Nick! The transceiver! Beep. I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Now then, Mr. Attorney. Do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? My, my! What is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me. Please. Why are you holding Maya hostage? For Mr. Engard's sake. Why are you... Why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me. A man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. I believe you are asking me for a reason as to why I'm doing what I am. Y yeah This is what I like to call my aftercare. What the heck is an aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is what is called client re relations, and it is part of an assassin's duty. An assassin's duty? We were unlucky this time, and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney. And to ensure that you would do everything in your power to end to the very end. What is your name? I believe I told you once before, however. Y you did, but my name is The Killer. That's still one of the worst names, Shad. That's absolutely one of the worst names. Shelly The Killer. You're Shelly The Killer? 
fuck with these? I love how the D is lowercase. I like how we called him Shelly the Killer, but in the little name tag, he's just the killer. Also, I love how we're just having this conversation in front of the entire criminal affairs department, by the way. We're like, wow, Shelly the Killer, no way. <laughs> like, the detective's literally on our left there. Real subtle, chat, real subtle. Please keep in mind you do not have much space to maneuver with me. As a the Killer, I always finish what I set out to do. You fail to keep up your end of the bargain. Maya! It would be my duty as an assassin to see she receives a nice long nap. Ah, uh, no! Now then, if you'll excuse me. If someone were to trace the signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. Bought by the cat meow. Wouldn't they be able to trace the transmission from the station? Absolutely. Absolutely, they would have been able to do that way before that point. Miss Maya, Miss Maya. I... I don't know what to say. I like how we haven't figured out it's the same guy we've talked to already. Right, chat? Like, we talked to this character in person. Do we not understand what he sounds like over the radio at this point? It's one thing if we hadn't met him, but, like, we literally did that last session. Like, how do we not think his voice at least sounds familiar at this point? Oh, well, it, it is Phoenix. He's not exactly Ace Detective. Edgeworth, hmm? Did you hear that? At the end of the transmission. Meow yeah, goes the cat. Probably voice modulation. Oh, that's fair. Actually, that would have been a nice touch. Walkie-talkie voices are so different. I'm gonna disagree with you. I'm gonna disagree with you. They're, they're not that different. I, I would buy the voice modulation, though. I, I totally agree with Dango. That would make more sense to me if he was doing that. Or, or if it does, like, thick accent or something. I, I would have maybe bought that. But I'm like, oh, come on. Huh? Oh. It sounded like a cat. A cat? It can't be. That cat, can it? What is it? I think... I know where Shelly the Killer is holding Maya hostage. I like with this one... We're like, ah, uh, let's let's go ambush the killer at his hideout. That'll go well. <laughs> Are we really gonna charge over to the other person's house? Edgeworth, have all police units head for on guard mansion immediately. All right, you hurry over as well then. <laughs> and then we get Maya killed because we cause a hostage situation. The end. Don't lose help hope yet, Pearls. The fight has only just begun. Yeah. I think I go here and then go here. March 22nd, on guard mansion, living room. Maya! Please answer us, Mystic Maya! We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. Assuming he's still in the area. Can't believe it. That butler, all this time he was to kill her. He and Ungard were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. <laughs> we're like, we, we're like, you, you know what's a good idea? When a, when a place is surrounded by police and all their, all their weapons are potentially aimed at a building, why don't you go in the building first without any protection? I heard that goes really well against trained assassins specifically. This bear is new. I'm going to examine it. Oh, it's a figurine of a bear. There's a lot of cuts in it for some reason. Figurine, a wooden bear-shaped figurine. It's covered in many thin cuts. Added to the court record. A bear? Isn't that more of a thing for Mr. Karida? Why would something like this be here? It's how he smuggled out the other item, Phoenix. Come on. One day you'll figure out the case. One day. Right, look down. There's a little pet door installed here. Ah, huh. I'm sure that's for Shu. Do you think that this came through that little door? Hmm, this door. It's locked. Well, I'm pretty used to breaking down doors by now. Let's go, Edgeworth. Slam. Slam. Crash. Ah, oh, there's no one here. From the looks of this room, 
Let's say this is some guard's private lounge. Can we go get the recorded murder here now? Possibly? Has he already confessed to it? Look at this, right? An antenna for sending and receiving radio signals and a VCR. Check inside the deck. There's a tape. It'd be an important piece of evidence. Oh! <gasps> Oh my gosh, we followed up on plot? <gasps> oh, round of applause. You did it, Phoenix. You you did it. I thought you were going to make me check the whole room for that. You did it. I'm proud of you. Character growth. <clears throat> if we're lucky, it'll have the moment the crime was com committed recorded on it. Exactly. Thank you for not making me check this room again. I'm sorry, but the tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. Oh, that would have been easy. No. But there's no mistake that someone used this to record something. Looks like someone took the tape we're looking for and escaped with it. Um, go to the wine cellar. <clears throat> we searched all over, but it looks like he got away. I'm sorry. Looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. A little... Why did it advance the dialogue there? I just pressed it once. I, I'm assuming that little girl's probably holding up somewhere, I'm assuming is what he said, but... Whatever. Yeah, you're right. We're close, I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints along every route, leading out of this district. Hermita says, gonna look for now. PC crashed while I was recording. P6 right to play through earlier and a bit annoyed. Aw. Sorry to hear that happened to you and Parameter. Hopefully the re-record goes fine. Leave the rest to us. Maya. Looks like a picture of Miss Impacts. With love, Celeste. Miss Impacts? You mean... Yes, Mr. Corita's former manager. Why would a picture of Miss Impacts be here in Mr. Ungard's mansion? And why does it say, with love? Hmm. This might be a clue. Found at Unguard Mansion with love, Celeste is written on it. Added to the court record. Ah! What's wrong, Pearls? Please, let me see the picture frame. Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back. Something written on the back of the frame. Maya. It's Mystic Maya. She left us a message. What? I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up. You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever. I'm fine, so you don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. Curly, you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's gotta watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that's it for now, Nick. Is there some kind of setting that's causing- Wait, hold on. Okay, I want to test something for a second, chat. I'm going to hold the button down. Do they have it auto-advancing the dialogue if I just hold the button too long or something? Because that's three times that has now happened. That's I... No! It's like Maya! Oh, it does auto-advance. Ew! I don't like that. So if I press it just like a frame or two too long, I'm getting a double input sometimes. That's kind of unfortunate. Right. What's wrong? Why the blank stare? I, apparently, I'd prefer it didn't do that, unless it's this. Because I'm not holding backspace, though. That's where I'm confused. Maybe this will turn it off? Like, I'm, hit, I'm not hitting backspace, unless backspace corresponds to more than one button here. Let's see if this works now. Nope, it's still advanced. So we said, oh, I'm um, nothing. And then we said, we searched the house, and this is the last room. Looks like he eluded us. Yeah, so I don't know why it's skipping it. It doesn't seem to check this. It's kind of annoying, actually. I'm gonna resave real quick. Yeah, that's really janky. Like, that's what I was thinking. It was like, one thing if I'm holding the other button to skip, and I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure I'm not holding this button. So I just held a different button, and it did it again. So, kind of unfortunate. Anyway. We searched the house, and this is the last room. It looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth. Yes. As far as clues go, 
I think this is about all I'm going to get. But I'm short one last thing. And what is that? Miss Andrew Sidelock. If I could just find out what secret she's holding. And I think I stand a chance in court tomorrow. To blow this case wide open and expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Oh, thanks, Edgeworth. See, that was that was the text skip button. Just, just for clarity. <laughs> like, that was the text skip. I don't know why the other one does that. That's kind of awkward. Well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open that last lock. March 22nd, detention center. Visitor's room. Good evening, Mr. Wright. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews, I've come to remove your Psylocke. Psylocke? I want to know. You will tell me. Your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me if you can. So that time I just held the button, since now I know that that's a feature. Let's go present the Magatama, I guess. Why frame him? Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. On Guard for the murder? I've already told you countless times, because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. On Guard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. So you're saying I was taking my revenge on in Matt, and that's why? What an absurd idea. I... I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Yeah, yeah. Miss Andrews, a woman who lives on being dependent on other people. There is something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. I guess I present the profile first before presenting the photo. Take that. Celeste, there's only one catalyst that could cause such a strong feeling, and even revenge, and that is Miss Impact's suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste... Oh, excuse me. Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him. Yet. But for you to hate Mr. Ongard, you mean that he must have had some relationship to Miss Impacts and her suicide. Can you explain to me what this relationship between... Celeste and Matt was... Now I think I present the photo. Take that. Take that! This... This is a photo of Miss Impacts, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though. What? With love, Celeste. This is Miss Impacts' handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, that's alright. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. Found this at Mr. Ungard's mansion. After all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. Hmm. So I'm gonna say why frame him. Celeste. She was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes. I heard that it didn't work out. As Mr. Carter didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes. Because of Matt. Because of Mr. On Guard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste. She was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at the time. I was working part-time back then. Often saw the two of them together. So that's why. With love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. 
They were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was thrown away. That's so horrible! Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. A scandal would have destroyed that. Sorry, family was messaging me something. A scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. She really seemed happy with him. Even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good match, they were even planning to get married. And then... It was suddenly called off. On the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste... She killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was my revenge for Celeste and for myself. Revenge? I'm sure you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see. So that's what happened. But... Then why did Mr. Carta have to call off the wedding? I don't understand it at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impacts. That wasn't the end of it. That day, I'm almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds and... So that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose... To die. And when Juan discovered her body, he hid her note. But, but why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that note was a powerful weapon against Matt. And it would be especially damaging to his refreshing like a spring breeze image. Why does everybody keep calling it that, by the way? They did mention that in the previous sessions. I'm just like... Not sure why literally every character says that, but whatever. In any case... With his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge? There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was... At the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it because I heard it from Juan. It was all I could find out about... Oh. It was so I could find out about all of this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it, and even brought a lighter. But I couldn't find the suicide note, and that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring them my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters, so when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. Gasp from Pearl. And that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? I... I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time, and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. Can't sleep either. Not with my situation. Or with what I now know. To be continued. Again, like, if you're not really cut out for the whole murder business, maybe you could have represented something, like, s something at small claims court. <laughs> right, chat? I mean, there, there's other options if you don't want to handle, like, gruesome murders potentially every day. Just saying. Anyway, 4-1, the trial.
We're huffing, apparently. I'm assuming we're having a nightmare. Gah. How did I get into this mess? That's far enough. You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? What have I done wrong? Wait, are we seriously reusing the nightmare sequence again? I cannot allow you to go on like this. I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. We have been judged. I've had this dream before, someplace some time ago. It was this game, the first case. As if this day was written into my destiny. <laughs> Today I'll stand in court as a lawyer. I mean, it wasn't even that long ago. To prove a killer innocent. I mean, no, you could still get him convicted of conspiracy. Uh, whatever, anyway. March 23rd, 9.43 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Beep goes the phone. Hello? This is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? Beep. <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. Ugh. There are a crazy amount of flashbacks going on here. I'm not gonna lie, Chad. I'm just like crawling to the end. I just, I, we just gotta do it. I know there's like an hour left, but man, this case is starting to get on my nerves with how many times we keep going back to things that just happened. Now listen up. You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you ever. Maya. Phoenix. Phoenix, please let Mia rest in peace. <laughs> Chad, I just want to say, please let her spirit go on. Let, let her move to the afterlife in peace. Maya, how's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, what, what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said... For a lawyer, the worst of times are when you have to force your biggest smiles. But you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here, not anywhere. Phone dot dot dots. Ugh, said a curse on guard again. Beep. Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore, I mean it. I'm waiting for it to be gumshoe. Indeed, it's gumshoe. You're really mean, pal. Huh, Gumshoe, I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? Let me join the investigation team. We're chasing after the killer, pal. Didn't he get kicked off the police force earlier? Or did that not happen? Did I misremember a plot point? What, wasn't he officially booted out earlier? That's why he was helping us? What? Then, you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we got zero leads on the guy. We're not going to give up yet. Gumshoe. Till the trial is over. Till the verdict is handed down. Yeah, like they... Like that was the whole reason he helped us get the, the camera info. Is because he wasn't on the police force, I thought. Question mark. Unless they just mean they kicked him off the case. In which case that was very ambiguously worded. and did not seem like that when we went there the first time. We're gonna do everything we can to find a killer. We could get Maya out, then you could get on guard the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true. We could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? So you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> right, chat? What, what a gimmick for a final case. As if it wasn't already going slow enough already. I have to make the trial last longer. You go at Mr. Edgeworth with everything you've got, then you two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it. So, 
Believe in us. We're gonna give it all we got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Beep. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure you could buy friendship. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm pretty sure you could. I'm just, I think that's one of the examples I would use there, to be honest. It's the strongest weapon in the world. You have it in abundance. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through, I know it. Oh boy, chat. I guess strap in. Welcome to this trial never done before by me. This will be interesting. March 23rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Am I just gonna press on like every statement? Bang. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt on guard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Chat saying, quote, Judge, after a night's sleep, I've decided the trial is pointless. I find the defendant guilty. I mean, he's declared guilty with far less, to be honest. I, I would not put it past the judge to do that randomly. Now, as I was now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. This judge is the hack, says Kirk, exactly. The mystery being, what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder? That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Mr. Edgeworth, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Ungard, and then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. Hmm. And you're saying that she is guilty after all? I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. A assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Corrida was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired his assassin, his client, so to speak, is mad on guard. Well, what a surprising turn of events. I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time, so I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true, but we still have to hold out as long as we can, at least until Maya's safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Bang. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers to the stand. Now then, witness. Your name and occupation, please. O okay. I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. And what is your relationship to the defendant? Well, uh, that's... I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor. Um, mentor to him in a way, yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Powers, please, you don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, but I'm just kind of a nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? I yes. I... I didn't know that. Um, but you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I'd like to like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Ungard's room. Oh, okay, sure. I mean, I'm just gonna press on every statement, presumably. Visit to Matt's room. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. 
He was talking with someone. At first I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while. Then I gave up and went back. I had the guests with me that night and I couldn't make them wait for me. Mm hmm. Nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Power's testimony. Talking with the bellboy is no big deal. If one assumes that the person Mr. Ungard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy... What are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just gonna have to charge in head first, right? Okay, well, I don't know what to press, so I'm just gonna press everything and see what happens. If we get punished or not. Pressing time, chat. Hold it! The defendant's room. Why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother, sort of. I wanted to say congrats. What's wrong? Why did you stop? Uh, Mr. Wright. What is it? You... You're going to try to trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? I... I know I'm just a poor, underpaid action star, but... But I'm... I'm not the killer. Um... No one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please. Don't trick me. Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into a bad guy. Every time? Witness? I will personally talk to the defense at a later time. But for now, please kindly continue with your testimony. Sorry. Do you want the defendant's room and then... Hey, wait a minute. I mean, how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? I'm gonna press again. I imagine I have to talk to... I imagine, like, to advance the trial, I might have to be a bit more specific. So, at first, I'm gonna play it very safe. And then I'm gonna see what happens if I speed it up a little. So I'm gonna play ultra safe here and press every statement. And we'll try to speed up the gameplay. Are you sure that was Matt on guard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the nickel samurai mask then. If that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. And? What was the defendant doing? Talking with someone at first, I thought it was the bellboy. Yeah, see, like, this is... This is an important statement for sure. Hold it. At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform, and he had a bottle of juice on the tray. Hmm. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but... I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. Why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. Guess I'm gonna have to wait patiently on this one. So they watch the two of them for a while. Um, I mean, I imagine at some point... He had to have exchanged the teddy bear, which would have had the suicide note in it, maybe? And was smuggled out of the room or something, so it looked more ambiguous. I'm assuming that's where this is gonna come up. Let's press. Hold it! You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant together, correct? Yeah. Bellboy just... was waiting around. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt... Well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? That's a perfectly normal thing to do. So, how long did you watch the two of them? Yeah, I imagine the tip was the teddy bear, and that's why it was weird. Just for clarity. Oh, not more than a minute or two, I think. I guess with me that night, I couldn't make them wait for me. I'm gonna press again. Who are these guests you're talking about? You guys, of course. You and Maya and Little Pearl. But it would be really rude since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. This is like squeezing water from a stone. Probably pointless to press further. Do you remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. I was making such a racket in our hyper state. And then focusing on her. I see. In any case, from his story, probably wasn't gone for very long. Hmm. 
So, I pressed every statement, but it didn't advance the dialogue? Uh. Okay, well... What's the two of them? Like, does the dialogue change if I repress these statements? Because he said I had to wait and see on one of them. Like, can I bring up his other conversation here? Oh, ew! That, oh, I hate that mechanic. Ew! Ew, I hate that mechanic. Ew! Ew! So, not only do I have to keep pressing statements, but I have to go backwards in the statements I'm pressing in order for things to advance. Oh, man, this is going to be a long trial, chat. <laughs> Strap in, chat. Well, hopefully I can finish it tonight, because we did have a slight delay start to this. I don't know, it's going to be a miracle if we finish in like an hour and a half, because I do have a hard cutoff, sadly. And this unfortunately seems like a case that does not want to end. Okay, so we're just flashbacking to him giving a tip, so let's follow up on that statement earlier. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Oh, yeah, that's it. Really know your job. Mm. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy, right? Yeah, let's press about the tip. Hold it. So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Ah, oh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I'm trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much it was? That's when something even more surprising happened. The bell boy was putting the tip he got in his pocket. That's when I got a, my first good look at the guy's face. It's really shocked. Mm hmm. I'm afraid I don't follow at all. Sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of the shocking moments I should ask about. Uh, probably the tip. The defendant is a huge star. You can afford to give generous tips, wouldn't you agree? Oh, uh, sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much. Would you please clarify for the court about how much you would say the defendant gave to the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really fat roll of cash. Oh, I guess... Actually, sorry. The toy would have been going to Matt on guard. My bad. I should have been thinking the inverse. That's a slight error on my assumption there. So, a little cross mark there. But that's also really stupid to pay him in the hotel. A roll of cash. Bang. Oh, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. That could hardly be called a tip, Your Honor. Hmm. The judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. I can just wait and see. I think we have to do the opposite of what we normally have to do since they want me to stall. So the option that says wait, I will pick more often than not. There's nothing I could really object to here. I mean, who can argue that a fat roll of money isn't really odd? Bang. Hmm. So supposing that roll of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Payment, your honor. Payment? Isn't it obvious? For the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida. Then, then the bellboy the witness saw. Yes, he was the assassin. Bang, bang, bang. Hold your horses now, Mr. Edgeworth. You don't have any proof of this, do you? 
Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I have here the card Shelly the Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelly the Killer? He is the person the police's special investigations team have been chasing for ages. I am certain that person the witness saw was this very assassin, Shelly the Killer. R really What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head, and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that bellboy again later on that night. What? Bang. Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Not a whole roll, exactly. Yes, sir, right away. The second time. This time, I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when that bellboy I saw earlier come out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Miss... I mean Juan Corrida's room. Now that I think about it, the bellboy did seem kind of out of place. So yeah, he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean... Thank you very much. This is all we need for now. Huh? But I'm not done, there's still more. Let us first establish the bellboy was truly Mr. DeKiller. And we shall see. Hmm. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if that bellboy really was the assassin. And I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. Ha, 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 ha. This is no laughing matter. Okay, what happens if I try to treat this like a normal case, even though they told me to go slow? Let, let's test the boundaries a little bit here. So we need him to talk about his face. So I'm gonna try to press him on the now that I think about it, because we still haven't established his face. Um, he might also bring about... He might also bring up what he was holding, which could be a teddy bear. Let's press. Hold it! Hold it. Oh no, I thought it was a pretty silly joke, yeah. Um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what the next damaging thing he's gonna say is next. Oh well. The bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart, and he wasn't holding a tray either. Well, that a little strange too, wouldn't you? Hmm. I agree it is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Let Mr. Powers' testimony slide, or... Um... I mean, if I have to stall, I'm gonna say try to pull a fast one. If it's between these two options, I'm gonna pick this one. And more often than not in cases anyway, where there's testimony, I need to push regardless. There's something strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy. But there really, really is. There really, really isn't. Objection. You two are done being school children. Bellboys are for room service. There's no reason for them to be empty-handed, ever. Your Honor, has the witness' previous statement be supplanted with this new one? Ugh, Edgeworth. Are you gonna do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? I see. Very well, this court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. I yes sir. Um, so now he said it was... So imagine I have to present something. I imagine pressing here won't do anything. I'll press just to see, but I don't think anything will change here. Okay, so now we're saying that when he first saw the billboy, the tray was in his hand. There's a bottle of, wine, of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice was it? Um, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice. We could come up with some sort of reason as to why he would come out empty-handed. Some sort of proof, and I think we could dodge the bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? 
So it's like another job for the court record. Okay, so that is a hint. We are supposed to do something here. So she's saying we have to prolong the trial as long as possible, even if it includes doing cheap tricks. So, based off of her suggestion there, I'm going to present the wine glass. Objection! Objection. Mr. Powers. Y yes? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and, and... So, a baseball has stitches. You're saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Uh, well, there's also... I mean, what about him coming empty-handed? I'd like to ask the court to please take a look here. This is the crime scene. There's a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Carrida's body. Liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is in the top of the table, in the lower right corner here, anyone can clearly see it as a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Carrida's room. Left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Ah, uh, but, but, that would mean the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room. Ah, uh, but can you prove that Mr. Carter was already dead at the time? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? I blame you for leading me down this route. Ha, ha, ha. I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? I is there? The bellboy was empty-handed. Or should I say, empty-handed. I'll call you with something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Huh? What? That bellboy. He was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black. Leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry. It slipped my mind. Ugh. Boy, does this make the bellboy look really suspicious. Alright, gotta focus. I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. The bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So? A football is made of leather. Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they're made of leather? They don't count unless they're red. Yeah, exactly. He gulps. Hammer bangs. But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Ugh. Seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness. Please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay. Their second meeting. Hmm. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Hmm. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. At least that testimony is mercifully short. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room? Yeah. I kind of saw that by accident. Some accident. Let's say you saw too much. All of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Thought he said he was empty handed. Yeah, that was kind of a weird. I don't know. This testimony is kind of all over the place. <laughs> now then. Let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. 
Okay, maybe I'll just treat it like a normal trial. Maybe this will make it a little less tedious for me. I don't think I care about him knocking on the door. Let's press about he gave something to the person inside. So we need to probably ask about who the person inside the room was and probably what the something is. So let's press it. Maybe we'll get one of the answers. I said hold it. Um, okay. That's better. Ahem. <clears throat> what kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh, um, okay. Hmm. Probably ask him one question at a time. Oh, I get to ask both. Well, I'm gonna ask one question at a time, so I gotta ask about the person inside first. So, who took this something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? And you're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, it was Mr. On Guard's room, correct? So it could have only been Mr. On Guard himself, I'd say. And then? What did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so he gave the person inside the room the thing. No, I'm gonna go back. Press, hold it. I said hold it. Okay, so this is the same. Skipping the dialogue, that's literally a repeat. Let's ask about the something then. Gave something to this person? Yeah. And what was this something? Ha ha ha. If I remember what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, would I? But this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. The bellboy left the crime scene. Immediately went to the defendant's room. There he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. It's for the person who received the item. All you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Uh, well, let's see. Hmm. I think it was... no. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Yes, sir. Now he says, if I saw it again, I could say for sure. I think it was some sort of wooden statue. Well, there's only one thing that was wooden. I'm gonna present to him the figurine. Assuming that's what he wants. Objection, Objection chant. Dot dot dot. What was the point of that pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it was me, your honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is gonna happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breath. Mr. Powers, something you saw. Was it this item? Again, we didn't get this approved by police. Chan, I'm pretty sure this is now another instance of evidence law broken in this game. Oh, hey, that's it. That's the something. Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm. Well, we found this at Man on Guard's mansion. At the defendant's house? Bang. What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelley the Killer assassinated Juan Corrida in his room. Then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found at Mr. On Guard's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Man on Guard is the killer's client. Welcome back, Seat Gaming Crew. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, Chris Grimm. Stream Elements is not behaving itself, so I'm assuming you came over from a raid. If so, welcome. Perfect mayhem! There we go. That time I heard it and saw it. 
hopefully everybody is doing well. What were you playing, Chris Graham? Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, this is a most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's all right. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Oh, sorry about that, chat. I just want to move something over. There we go. That's what I want to see so I can see the chat easier. Parasite Eve 2 randomizer. Hopefully it was good. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. Ah, almost forgot that he knew about it too. Hmm, I think it is clear that there's no need for us to continue this trial. I, I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute please. Yes, Mr. Wright. There are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright. What questionable point would you like to explore further? Um... Probably not his testimony. So it could be the person who received the bear or the bear itself. I go with the bear itself, maybe? Thank you for the raid, Christogram, and hopefully you get some rest. I think it's fairly obvious the bear itself is very questionable. The bear, Mr. Wright? This was found at Mr. Ungard's mansion. However, Mr. Ungard was arrested at the hotel that night, which means that since the murder occurred, he's not had a chance to go home. Oh. I think your honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It's not possible it was Mr. Ungard who took this bear to his mansion. Bang. Well, why, that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken the spare home. Phew. Disaster averted, it looks. Objection. You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Ungard's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. Can't believe it. That butler. All this time he was to kill her. Yeah, we kind of flubbed hard on that one. The killer and Ungard were working together, so to speak. And the killer was hiding at Ungard mansion. As its butler. Well, what? A bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to Ungard Mansion by the killer himself. I like, <laughs> I like that ridiculous arm. That is quite something. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, Ungard had told him so. Told him. Guard had him. Oh, excuse me. Ungard had him do so. I was reading the word "told" in there for some reason. I assume because it would have been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Is there anything I can attack at all? I have to try. I have to find something else. What will you do now, Mr. Wright? Do you plan to... I plan to expose a clearly shaky place, Mr. Power's testimony. Oh, what? There's still another one? There's indeed, Your Honor, and it's quite a questionable point. What are you trying to pull? Yeah, so far this is all circumstantial, exactly. Oh, well, we can't have that. Oh, we're back to this point again. Well, fine, we'll say the person who received the bear, because technically if they saw the arm, it could be Miss Andrews we could try to bring in to mislead the court, I guess. There was one thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear. And that is the identity of the person who received the bear.
As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear. We can't be sure of- Ugh! Everybody's dot 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 question marking. Dot 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 from Powers. Well, what is it, Mr. Powers? You're going to scream like that. At least give us a good reason why. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Actually, so, I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but the arm. It was the Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear it. You've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order. It looks like you've dug your own grave yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So, the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, Matt on guard is the Nickel Samurai. Well, I mean, this is going to be a very easy contradiction if it gives me a point to object. Thanks to the defense, we've made that all the clearer. Bang. I think we've heard enough. We know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Matt Ungard. I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright? You cannot win against the truth, could you? I mean, I don't know why he's trying to show us up like, Ha, oh, right, you couldn't win against the truth. When literally, like, his entire prosecution side has been either directly arrested, should be arrested, or had their reputation completely destroyed by them falsifying evidence and obscuring the truth. <laughs> and sometimes they got away with it because some of the murders were not properly solved. So... Feels like kind of a poor point for Edgeworth to make there. I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth was stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? What should I do? Raise an objection. objection. I know I don't have to worry about the bad ending until later. So for now, I have to actually play it somewhat seriously. There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. I mean, is it dirty? I mean, this is just a true statement, though. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, the very same figurine was found at Miss at Unguard Mansion. However, it's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. Bang. The real client? Yes. Tisk tisk. Is this all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the killer's real client and therefore the real murderer? Well, time to throw somebody else under the bus. Let's throw Andrews. She wore the costume. Take that, chat. Adrian Andrews? Yes. Why do you know that she tried to frame Matt on guard for the crime? By wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Oh, then, then the nickel samurai's arm that I saw. That could have very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. On Guard? You would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figuring at Mr. On Guard's mansion was a well laid trap by Miss Andrews. Everybody dot dot dots. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there's no evidence to support it. However, 
I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell on Gar did it. I can't believe anyone would go this so far. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty. It's murder of all things. This is to save Maya. This is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Bang. Order, order, order. All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor. For the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even you must have thought it strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did sp specific, Especially? I thought I was going to say especially. Did specifically, I'll say more, I'll, I like that word better, bring that bear to unguard right away. What do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness and will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. Bang. I see. Well then, the court will take a short, ten-minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. March 23rd, 11.54 a.m., just a court, defendant, lobby number three. You know what, Chad? I actually ran out of water. So we're going to take a very, very short break, and we're just going to continue with this. So be back in like two minutes, Chad. There we go. So hopefully Chad is able to see it, and we're going to continue here. Oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Ah, uh, I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick! Pearls? Where's Mia? I... I don't know. Really strong power suddenly called her away. Really strong power. Phone dot dot dots. Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is... It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Yeah, sort of. Just barely found something to latch on to. You, that's good, pal. What about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out to kill her? Or, excuse me, where to kill her and my R? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but... What? We don't have any more time. We just had one. Even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself. Gotta keep the trial going until Maya's been rescued. But have I just run out of luck this time? Is all our hope for naught? A tent! Huh? A tent? I can see a circus tent. M Mia! It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I can see a circus tent outside the window, about 300 feet away. Gumshoe, is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal. The very big circus. Maya's somewhere within a 300-foot radius of the main tent. What? Okay, hold on a sec, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map. About 300-foot radius from the main tent. Hurry. And? And? I could see a mailbox under the window just outside. Gumshoe. There's also a mailbox. Hmm, okay. What else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was very small. It was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. I felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so. I heard her. An old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. 
Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's been starved. Come, Shu, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you all right, Phoenix? Do this. Should be good. It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. Hopefully not. We'll see, though. March 23rd, 12.05 p.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Bang. Court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. So I want to test one thing since we're here. Okay, Blue Donna is working. That's good. I don't see it pop up in the general chat for some reason, but I see it in stream elements. Oh, because I've muted. That's right. I hid stream elements responses on the stream. Hmm. I'm going to fix that later. So Blue Donna did respond, but I can't view it in that window. Interesting. Okay. Disregard what I said earlier. I guess it's because stream elements was doing it because I told it to mute that. Anyway, it's more of a side note. Let's continue for now. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, I've been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You've seen it before? That's right. It's only natural the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secrets? All right. Why? Why does she... The bear figurine. Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it could be taken apart one piece at a time. Uh-oh, we got one piece. As its center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. Hmm. So, this figurine, it's a container of sorts, is it? Yes. Looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is superb craftsmanship. Oh, yes, I nearly forgot. Begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Looks like there really was something to that bear after all. Bear figurine. Um... I'm gonna press, like, one statement, and then if it doesn't... If it doesn't advance on this one, I'm just going to go back to the beginning and press the rest. Well, says that this bear is actually a small container or a jewelry box. Never told anyone. As long as Juan never told anyone either, then only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? And of course that means Mr. Ungar didn't know, right? We don't know anything about this figurine. So we should try to figure out, find out more for now. Yeah. I'll keep pressing her for more information. Okay, so they do want me to press for more. That confirmed it. Hold it. A puzzle. That's right. Hmm. <laughs> but it looks like an ordinary figurine. True enough. People who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. So, what kind of puzzle is this exactly? Okay, let's press again. Hold it. So you could take it apart? How would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right and then push it in. 
Oh, yes, I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Oh, this is most interesting. A boy and his new toy. Like he's five all over again. I guess he's slowly taking it apart as the images pop up. Give me one moment. There we go. Let's proceed. Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I think he's lost it. So what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? Alright, let's press on what the item is. Oops. Hold it! How do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this... This was a present for you. Hmm. That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear. So I thought it would be perfect for Juan. So... It was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue your testimony. Okay, let's press further on complexity. Hold it! So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us, Swan and myself. It's a souvenir from Switzerland. I doubt there are many people with the same bear in this country. This looks like it could be easily broken. Especially if someone wanted to get at what's inside. Well, it's a toy. It'll never be the same again once it's been broken. I think this is about all I'm going to get for now. The green updated in the court record. Wouldn't puzzle with the hollow inside. Only Karita and Andrews knew how to open it. Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realize. Huh? That there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we have agreed to this point, there's only one logical question that could come next, and that is this. What is inside this box? Well, what's inside? That's right. That's what we are going to find out next, witness. Yes. You are the only one who can open this. Please. There's a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews now as she solves the puzzle. Click. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? Well, what is that? It looks like a note. I don't think we need to guess at what that is, do we, Mr. Wright? It's the suicide note. The suicide note? The suicide note left by Juan Carita's former manager, Celeste Pax. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts. Just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Carita himself. It seems Celeste Impax had very beautiful handwriting. She just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Bang. Order! Witness, do you know about this? Yes, I did. Heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public. But I couldn't find it anywhere. Because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Edgeworth's pace. Now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least, that's what I would think. Now then, I believe it is only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. I was going to burn it for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. 
Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. Very well. The judge's voice rang out loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In her notes, Celeste Impacts left to us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and thrown away by Unguard. About being engaged to Karita, and Unguard's role in destroying that. About how she decided in her despair to end it all. And that's all Miss Impacts had to say. There is one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. On Guard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for the murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, one was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post-ceremony show, he's going to hold a press conference. My word. Manangard values, above all else, is refreshing like a spring breeze image. Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. Plus suicide note added to the court record, found inside figurine and tells of Ungard's horrible misdeeds. It's Ungard's part the woman killed herself. And this time he even went as far as to kill someone to stop him from revealing that. How terrible. What a selfish person. I guess there are slimeball lawyers out there who will defend these creeps too. There is no room for doubt here. Mr. The Killer's client goal was to obtain this suicide note. The only person who needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget the bear with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. Bang. It seems we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. It deserves no sympathy from anyone. Ugh. How am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Dumb she wasn't called yet, so you know you mu what you must do. I know. I have to carry on and buy some more time. Okay. There are two deadly pieces of evidence. The figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of this situation through one of those. The gavel's already in the judge's hand. Phoenix, hurry! The suicide note of the figurine. Which one of these should I pursue? Um... Let me think about this. So... I don't know what I could really push with the figurine. I guess I could maybe say... Welcome back, Imperameter. I guess what I think is that... Let me think, let me think, let me think. Uh... I guess the figurine by itself is not necessarily the nail in the coffin. I guess if I can prove the suicide note is fake, that would be more important. I'm gonna go with that angle and choose suicide note. Objection! Objection. Please wait, your honor. Oh man, look at that lawyer. He's still going at it. It's like he doesn't care about that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. I think your honor believes that Madame Guard killed in order to obtain this note. Yes, that is correct. But that seems a little strange. In fact, I think there's a contradiction here. This note was hidden by Mr. Corrida until the night of the murder. That is the case. I say that Madame Guard could not have known what was written on this note. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Exactly. 
Why do you think of it that way? And I thought it was rather strange. Oh, I technically already just... I guess I ruled that out because I know that I he knew already, but I guess that's fair logic. So I guess what I could say... I mean, I'm still probably going to incriminate somebody, so we'll, we'll see where it goes at the end of the statement. No one in the right mind would kill for a note without first knowing what it said. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order! You make a valid point, Mr. Wright. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Uh huh? The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I'd like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It is a very small video camera, Your Honor. The type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? What the? But the spy camera was in my possession. And on guard and the victim both thought of the others as their biggest rival. Even went so far as to use this type of item to find out each other's weaknesses. And? The victim, Juan Carta, was being spied upon. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt on guard. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order! Uh, Mr. Wright! I yes, Your Honor? You... Don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities. Well... Sort of. Sort of is not an acceptable answer, Mr. Wright. I see you are confused, Mr. Wright. Probably thinking, but I have the camera that was in the stuffed bear's eye. But this camera that I have is not the same one. Last night, I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this. Don't use Bug Sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Matt Ungard's fingerprints were on there. Well, Phoenix, looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. Ungard learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Hey, hey. Now what's that lawyer thinking? Mommy, is that man the bad killer guy? Shush, stop. Don't look at him. The way he's sweating is just so ill. Phoenix? Yes, Chief? Have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? What am I going to do next? Does running away look like a frightened child work? I know it seems like Mr. Edgeworth is very close, putting the lid on this case. But, in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one very important thing. Well, what is it, Mia? There's a piece of evidence that he really should investigate. I don't think he should investigate. I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scolded for not remembering to look into the item when he had the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? Because <laughs> they want the player to guess, obviously. All right, I think this time we finally understand everything. Well, Mr. White, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Mia is talking about? Can I figure out what it is that needs to be looked at, or should I let it go? Well, I'm pretty sure we got to present evidence. Let's go further. I have an objection, Your Honor. Hmm. That was about the weakest objection I've heard, Mr. Wright. Objection! objection! Your Honor, the defense has no intention of letting this go so easily. You were beginning to sound desperate. That's just your imagination, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. Hmm. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? Wow, we're stealing from Mia. We're the worst. So, you're telling me I forgot something. 
You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. But there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. I'm assuming it's something to do with the suicide note. I don't see what anything else we have would possibly be it. I imagine it's the fact that it was hidden up until this time. And again, it would not really surprise me if we're trying to say that this evidence was faked because of the fact that it had been out of police possession and they didn't confirm it beforehand. So I'm just going to present the suicide note here. Take that. Take that! Phoenix is always desperate. That's also true. That is... Miss Impact's suicide note, right? Hmm. Who knows? Oh. Oh, are we now going the original route where I said that we were going to say the evidence was faked and we're going to pin the blame on somebody? Oh, so I was just ahead in the script. Okay, I feel less bad now. <laughs> that was that was the first thing I said. Oops. <laughs> My bad, chat. I mean, sure, this suicide note was found inside the bear. This bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analyzed. Oh. So. As to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impacts or not. That is yet to even be remotely confirmed. Oh. I didn't realize we had the bear. Oh wait, that's fine. Bang, bang, bang. Mr. Wright. You can't seriously be- Oh yeah, we did pick it up in the exam earlier. I mean, I, I still think my previous point is true. I think we're just gonna say somebody forged the evidence. I'm assuming we're gonna blame one of the prosecutors. <laughs> I'm just assuming this is where it's going. Especially since she met with Miss Andrews. So she would have been able to freely go to the crime scene or whatever. Andrew says, Mr. Wright, you- Are you saying this suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews, you were the one who tied- tried to pin this murder on Mr. On Guard. Used to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into this bear. How dare you? Objection. Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There's no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. Objection. But if this is a fake, the witness is the only person who could have made it. What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only other person other than the victim who could solve the puzzle is the witness herself. Ah! Miss Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt on guard. I... I did no such thing. Objection. Right. You're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake. Then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Objection! Objection. Mr. Edgeworth, you're the one who presented this scrap of paper as evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution. Ugh. That's enough. Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on this suicide note? It says the defense has stated. The handwriting has yet to be analyzed. If that's the case, it seems yet, yet again we have reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Impossible. That's impossible. This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that both the prosecution and defense further investigate. And writing now says my butt. That's just the lawyer trying to buy more time. A guard is guilty. Look, any idiot could tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Phone call time. What does that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello, Gumshoe? He sighs. What is with him? What's with that sigh? Where's Maya? What happened to the killer? He, uh... He got away. What? I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there was some way to make it up to you. I really do. Anyway, what's going on? We found his hideout, pal. But the two of them were already gone. This is terrible. I'm going to keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry. I just need a little more time. But don't tell me we don't... 
We don't have any more. Guilty, guilty. 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 Guilty, guilty. Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. Wright, I, I can't for us to come this far and... Whoa. What is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. I can't do that. Bang. Mr. Wright, will you please get a hold of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. Let me take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch. Take that. <laughs> I like the little spinning thing there. Random phone call on the trial and everyone isn't questioning it. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could get in big trouble for taking a phone call mid-trial, for sure, from any side of the bed. <laughs> like, from either side, pretty much. But anyway. Mr. Edgeworth? Please, you gotta buy some more time. Court is in session. Wow, he just hung up. What a boss. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying... Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but... Bang. I'm reluctant to do this, however. It appears I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. I... This time I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Uh-oh. Edgeworth objected. Please wait, Your Honor. Edgeworth? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I only request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests on this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. But can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourn for today and then reconvene tomorrow? 30 minutes. Please, Your Honor, that's all I'm asking for. Please, Your Honor. Very well. Bang. At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30-minute recess. But be advised, I will not allow another recess today. Okay, kind of what I wanted. I'm a little off track, but I don't think this ultimately disproves the murder theory earlier. I guess I have to think about more ways to waste time, I suppose. To be more accurate with my guesses. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. Bang. March 23rd, 2.04 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Right. Well, what's going on with Maya's situation? The killer. It looks like he got away again. 30 minutes. We can't find her in that time. Ugh. Beep. Report. Ah, uh, is that Mr. Edgeworth? We don't have time. Just spit it out. Right. Looks like we just missed them, sir. But the killer left a few things behind by accident and is rushed to get away. A few things. Can we use any of them as evidence? Ho, ho, ho. I thought you'd ask, pal. I got the things he left with me right now and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. I don't have time to wait for those guys, sir. Those guys weren't looking. I swiped the stuff and ran. What? Well, I'm not a detective anymore. Wait, wait, so he isn't a detective? Wait. Wait. Wait, I'm so lost. <laughs> It, is he? Wait, it, are they saying he's not a detective anymore, but he is a police officer? Is is that what they meant by the first comment? Man, that was really ambiguous. I'm just like, I mean, I agree he's not a detective, but I'm just like, I, you know, he said that throughout the game, and I'm like, I'm like, did he actually lose this position? So maybe he's just like a regular street cop. But then I'm not sure why he was in an investigation team? I don't think his position makes any sense to me. I've been trying to, like, figure it out. Because you have detectives that do investigation, but then he isn't a detective, but he was on the investigation force, and now he's not handing evidence over because he's not a detective? 
And then he was talking about how he's gonna work at Wright's office instead. That's also a good point, Dango. I'm so confused. <laughs> they don't just let civilians join like an investigation. This is where I'm like, I don't know how to pin him what he's doing. What a weird plot point for them to go back and forth on. I'm really sorry, sir, but I gotta put the law on hold for now. Sounds bad. Hope he doesn't get into too much trouble over this. My hunk of junk car. Say he'll be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. All right, just get in here in one piece. I'm on a mission and no one can stop me now, sir. No one. Yo, 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 chap. I'm pulling out all the stops and running every red light. I'm just left by the murder, huh? Maybe there's something among them that will be decisive enough to end this. Did he crash his car? Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gumshoe, answer me. <laughs> Gotta put the law on hold. What about evidence law? I mean, they I, they threw that out earlier in the case. They, they gave up on that law. No one can stop me. Did he just cause an accident and potentially kill people? Wow. Well, what happened? It sounded like he had an accident. Guessing his cell phone broke as well. well what was he thinking? We gotta hurry and call for help. We have no idea where he is. His cell phone is broken and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. Also, we don't get those items before they do. Police will take possession of them. No, we can't let that happen. Well, if there is a way we could find out where he is, then we stand a chance. Why? Why did Gumshoe have to go into the accident now? Oh, ew. I just realized how we're gonna find him. I'm disappointed. Disappointed, Chad. Do we really have to call Von Karma back to get the tracker? Ugh, gross. Yeah, this case really is all over the place. I mean, I, we've been in this trial for like an hour, 20 minutes plus, and this is only one part of the multi-part trial. Like this case is taking an eternity to get through. Holy, what madness, chat. Is there any way to find out exactly where he is at this moment? Yes, it's Von Karma. That's right, there is a way. What? How? I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshrew is through this. Present. Why are you bringing up Francisca at a time like this? Oh, I see. Try to get in contact with her. Chances are slim, but she's all we have. Francisca, will she even want to help us? Edgeworth, what is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty, but what I'm doing now, I'm pinning the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say, defense attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right? It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict? Is Prosecutor Edgeworth here? Oh, wrong person speaking. Bailiff says, is Prosecutor Edgeworth here? Yes, Bailiff. There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. They're probably finished with that handwriting analysis. Have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do. To be continued. Holy, we're almost there, chat. We've had two different long trial segments, but I think this is now finally the end. Let's go ahead and save. We're gonna do, I think, a little mini save towards the end of the trial, so I don't need to repeat the trial, but we're gonna purposely go for the bad ending. And I have a note at what line of dialogue it is, but I don't have context. So we still have to get there. We still have to get to the point where I could get a bad ending. Let's go for it. March 23rd, 2.35 p.m., just a court, courtroom number three. 
bang. Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem to be distraught, Mr. Edgeworth? I... that is... It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? Looks like something unexpected had just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Miss Impact's suicide note. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, we have discovered that the suicide note is a forgery. Oh, it really is? That's kind of funny. What? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean, I guess... I guess Juan, if he hid the original note, technically could have put a fake note in, so that way it would be more defamatory versus his rival. I guess I could see that. This seems to be like another layer of complexity that I'm not really sure adds anything special to the case. I mean, whether or not that is true or not, I guess is fine. This... This note was not written by Miss Impax herself. It is a fake. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, would you care to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Impax, then who wrote it? We need more time to do a more detailed analysis, however. It appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Corrida. Oh. Okay. That's that's fine. That's that's not super unexpected. I would say it's unnecessary. I guess is the best way to frame it, but whatever. Mr. Carida. Well, well. Looks like Miss Impact's never left a suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about on guard. However, Your Honor, even though the suicide note is indeed a fake. Mr. Ungar could not have known that, and so the facts remain unchanged. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm. That does sound very plausible. The theory that Ungar had no idea the suicide note was fake. Something seems a little wrong with it. Um... Let me think. Do I just try to use his own evidence against him, maybe? Let's try that once. Let's present. The defense believes the theory the prosecution has stated uh, contradicts testimony. Everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, but it's impossible for Mr. Ungar to not have known it was a fake. So, where's it at? So they did introduce the idea of the spy camera I'm assuming I present a spy camera in general, even though that's not the one he mentioned in court, with the theory being that if he was spying at him at all times and knew everything and knew the contents of the note, he would therefore have known that he would have seen him fake the note and therefore would have no motive. So I'm guessing that's what it wants. I'm going to present this. Take that. What does this little item called again? Um, a video camera, Your Honor. Well, a very small one, but... Oh, that's right. A camera. All you kids in your fancy toys nowadays. We really need to make this judge retire. Mr. Edgeworth, earlier you claimed that Mr. Ungard knew the existence of this note because he's spying on the victim. Isn't that right? Dot 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 exclamation mark chat. If that were true, then this means Mr. Ungard would have known that the victim had forged the note. Ah! Uh, bang. So then, the defendant knew the suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. Prosecution theories of what Mr. Ungard's motive for murder was has suddenly disappeared into thin air. But, Your Honor, it's not as if Mr. Ungard monitored Mr. Corrida 24 hours a day. 
Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ungar didn't know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? Ugh. Bang, bang, bang. Order, 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 Mr. Edgeworth. It looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. Ugh. As I figured. Huh? As you figured. As I figured. It came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you're not making any sense. Oh, did they... catch the killer or something? I heard the results of the handwriting analysis. I thought this might happen. Question is, what next? What next? The prosecution can't prove Mr. Ungard's motive through the evidence. I must prove it from another angle. The defense demanding evidence, that's a new one. <laughs> We're pretty much like, nah, uh you. <laughs> like, on, like, everything presented. Yeah, we kind of turned into the prosecution this time around, which is different, I guess. Well, I agree with you there. Even the judge agrees, apparently. Your Honor, the prosecution I'd like to call the witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness... This witness is a little... Unusual. Edgeworth stuttering? This is not like him at all. Unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is one who perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of... Who was it that hired Shelley to kill her to commit murder? That's impossible. Who in the... No such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth, who is this witness? It is... It's, um... Yes, go on, who is it? The man himself, Mr. Shelley the Killer. Oh, Mr. the Killer. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, wait, Shelley the Killer? Um, you mean the killer? Uh, I mean, the assassin? Yes, your honor. He's coming here, to the witness stand. Well, yes, in a matter of speaking. Be nice that this is a very unusual circumstance. I ask for your permission. Oh, so maybe they haven't caught him. Maybe that was... Okay, so may maybe it wasn't the other... So he's saying it's unusual. So maybe it wasn't that he's caught, but that he's, like, calling in over the phone. And that's why the phone rang earlier. Okay. So we are going to get him in on trial, but indirectly. So I don't know if we'll have like a little TV for him or something, or like a radio. I'm assuming that something like that is about to happen. Or it could just be him and he just could be alluding to unusual circumstance. I kind of hope it's a little TV or something. That'd be kind of funny. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. Yes. Is this all right with you? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag the trial out. Defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is all right to do this. Very well then. Prosecution calls its witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no other way left for us? Now then, witness. Um, your name and your... Um, occupation, please. Oh, it is a radio. Okay. Because I was going to say, like, otherwise they just arrest him. Very good, sir. My name is Shelley DeKiller. A little happy radio chat. And I'm a professional assassin. I, I say, what is going on here? Your Honor? How could you remain so calm? What is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now. And it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. The Killer would testify to this court. Yeah, Shelly the radio, exactly. So this must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Okay, I was guessing TV, radio, I was in the right ballpark. Oh no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my courtroom. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. The Killer himself. 
witness. Please present some sort of proof that you are, in fact, Shelly the Killer. I don't understand. Please wait a second. Dot dot dot. I'm so hungry. But Maya! Maya. A, a voice. Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We're satisfied that this man is indeed Shelly the Killer. Looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Bang. Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many other choices under this circumstance, so... Now then, witness. There's one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Corrida. Is this correct? It is as you say. It did indeed kill Mr. Corrida. Judge Gulps. Now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it, a bad dream. Oh, if he thinks it's a dream, maybe we can escort him to an old folk home? Chat, maybe we get the judge to retire. Tell him his mind broke. Shelly to kill her. What is he going to say? About my client. There's something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I'm here today on the witness stand. It's my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Okay. Hmm. Mr. De Killer seems to be a very clever man. We have a walkie-talkie on the stand. Welcome, Chris. You are in the final home stretch of this case. What a marathon. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. While he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor, Mr. De Killer is only stating the truth. We did have a parrot take the stand. That is also true. You know what? It's not really unheard of nowadays to have remote witnesses either. Normally, they have, like, a television in one room and a television in the courtroom. If they're trying to do remote from, like, either, like, a secure room, or technically there's also, of course, post certain conditions of 2020, there's a lot more remote in general from home, for example, for minor court stuff. But oh well. Boy, the times have changed, chat, since the game was made. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself thing? Hmm. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collect it, Phoenix. Handle court orders all day, and the inclusion to appear remotely is becoming more common. Mmm. Exactly. For sure. About my client. Okay, so do I press him on every statement? That's the only thing I'm asking myself at the moment. I mean, maybe I could skip literally the first one. Let's at least go from two and assassin forward. Hold it. The trust between, yeah. Because the problem is like we keep stalling for time, but I'm like, uh, I don't really want to press every statement unless it makes me. Trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. Well, I see how we could potentially get our client killed later. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. And that is why you're testifying in this manner. This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the killer name so my clients can trust me. Can someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did, 
Yes? That person wouldn't be my client for very long. It would certainly... Uh, that's enough. Please, no more. Very well, it was only a hypothetical anyway. There's no, tr There's no more trustworthy name than to kill her. You're exactly correct. Let's present this, or not present, we'll press this. Seems a little strange to me. I mean, not to tell us the name of your client. I think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules, acted outside of their prescribed role. Their role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. This is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You, who gave you the right to be so high and mighty, says the judge. Who the gentleman who spoke just now? Excuse me, but would you care to die? Oh uh, no, I uh, didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. I wish you grasp this concept before I give the name of the client. Okay, I'll press further. Hold it. We understand, so please tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. Still have a few things to say before I do. Ah, that egomaniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You will live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow, coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff. Just tell us the name already. <laughs> Threatening a judge in this universe, not that shocking. I was gonna say, that it's just another Tuesday here. Patience. Try to calm down a little. It's important to try to understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and close. You have to work to get him to talk. Not his therapist, you know. Are you really gonna make me press this first statement? Fine. Hold it. Try to speed things up, Chan. I think I got punished. Is there anything you have to say later? Can you please tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. That this is something I must state first. You know what the word first means. Sorry, go on. Are you really gonna make me press this all again? This is so annoying. Oh, so this time we got new dialogue, so... I don't know why this time we got new dialogue, but it's more along the lines of we started repressing all of the statements again. And we talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, how before he'd broken one of the rules. So I pressed on the comment where he said he broke the rule. And this time we got a different dialogue, I think. So we'll go forward from here. If not, I'll keep pressing. Person who frames another as the worst kind of human. That's why you feel you could betray this person? I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. It's my luck, an assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone. Do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. You can't, and I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. In that case, I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. Oh my gosh. Do I just press it again? That seems a little strange to me. And you're about to tell us the name of your client. I think this would be very bad for them. Doesn't matter to me, this client's already broken a prescribed rule, which we already did before. Oh, I think this is new. Now then, now then, I do believe it's about time I revealed the name of my client. Don't you agree? Yes, please. Go further. What is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. You can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness. What is the name of the client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida? That person's name is... 
Adrian Andrews. Dun dun dun. What? Objection. Witness. That's not who you told me it was earlier. Wait, them. What are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client. And it is Adrian Andrews. What? This can't be. On the phone earlier. What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. The Killer just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stab Edgeworth in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. The Killer told him a different name. Mad on guard, perhaps. I knew it. Objection. This... This is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. But you were the one who summoned this witness. Ugh. Ugh. You, Shelly the Killer. My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is Matt on guard, am I correct? All I wish to do is procure his acquittal. Huh. Hmm. Wow. All of a sudden it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. Bang. The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided this suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Poor Edgeworth, says Chris. Hopefully you're feeling well, Chris. Furthermore, there's a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. Mr. De Killer's client, who requested the murder, was not the defendant at all. No. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Madame Guard is innocent. Uh-oh, chat. I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please, continue your discussion, and call me when you have reached a verdict. Beep. Bailiff, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. Chris says he feels bad for Edgeworth. He had a perfect record in his career. Then we show him, we show up and use literal magic to beat him in absolutely insane, nonsensical cases. Oh, sorry you're not feeling well though. What now? With the way this is going, Angard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but, but Edgeworth is right. The killer is lying. On guard, my client. I know he's guilty. Can I live with myself if I win this? Hmm. Uh... Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Hmm. I think this is not quite the line I'm looking for. As I said before, I have one line I'm looking for, but I haven't seen it said yet. Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shelley to Killer is certainly lying under oath. Hmm. It wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please. That testimony just now was all one big lie. Miss Andrews. The suicide note may have been a fake, but that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death, it's all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now, you have to believe me, was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. De Killer himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there's quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and button donning the nickel samurai costume. But that's... that's... You even have a motive. 
We know Miss Celeste's impacts was a large part of your life. You wanted to follow her. You wanted to re- you, Oh, and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want them both dead. I- No, Mr. Wright! You- You know the truth, tell them! Tell them the real story. Who the real killer is, tell them! Please, help me! Yes, I know the truth. Bang. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? I mean... I guess we can see what happens. Let's get the verdict. Chris says, I love the suicide image is cropped away. It looks less like she's going to surround her, more like she's obviously floating over him to assert dominance. Yeah, she's trying to master the T-pose. She's not quite doing it right. Your Honor, the defense requests that. It's no use. I can't. Feels like I've lost my voice. Phoenix. I can't do it, Mia. I can't accept a not guilty. You are a lawyer. I know, but... A man on guard is a killer, a murderer. I can't. Can't let him get away with this. Can't let him someone else take the fall. And let Miss Andrews be convicted. I'm no better than on guard. Okay. So I can't force an early ending. That's what I was curious about here. Even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact. But it's because of Edgeworth that I know the real truth. He could have gotten on guard and convicted so many times over. But he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? Never thought about it until now. I... I trust him? Yes, you do. Bang. Mr. Wright, your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. DeKiller. Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Right. But, but, that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. See through witnesses' lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. There's still more evidence to look at. Man, Chad, in this case. I'm like, please, please wrap it up. I'm begging you. It's after midnight. No, this trial is so long. Right, chat? Oh my gosh, we are crawling to the finish line here. And I'm sure that one of the pieces arrive here in the... Oh, shoot, excuse me. I'm sure that one of those pieces arrives here in the, this very courtroom. A miracle will occur. Yeah, we gotta wait for the miracle evidence, apparently. Very well, the trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. DeKiller. Right away, your honor. Has the verdict been reached? Before that, we'd like to talk with you a little more. Hmm. About? All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about the case. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about, usually done? What? What shall we have him testify about now? Mr. DeKiller, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. You legal people in your procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? About my client, part two. As I've already stated quite a few times, Eugene Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tempering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime, while pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Corridor was dead. So, chat, I'm gonna put myself in his shoes for a second. Like, obviously he's lying, but like... If he... decided... that none of his clients could be found guilty... 
But he, from his position, is here to say in court that his client did it, even though it's not his client. Wouldn't that still ruin his reputation? Isn't this just like a really stupid plot point? Like, I feel like I'm not overthinking this. Like, I really feel like this is like, oh, yes, that client betrayed me, even though that's exactly what we would have to do in court regardless. Question mark? Like, if they don't pin it on somebody, where does it go? Like, I don't follow 100% why he's saying this. I don't know, chat. Puts a big question mark there. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that one corridor was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife in the button. That act is what I'm referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. Hmm. This is a most unexpected turn of events for the um fifth time now. Just follow the angel motto. Just don't think about it too hard. Be innocent of knowledge. It is so funny, Chris. You missed it earlier. They were saying ignorance is bliss earlier. I definitely thought of you, Chris. I was going to mention it to you earlier. Or later if I didn't see you at that point. But yeah, ignorance is bliss. However, this time everything has finally been revealed. Oh, I wish. I know this is not going to end because this is not leading into the one line of dialogue I need to know about. Objection. Objection. Just a second, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? We still have the cross-examination to do. But you don't... <clears throat> Excuse me. But you don't need to question testimony like this. Do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the defense will question the witness. As if I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What does this... What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony, then... Then I'll expose the lies and that oh-so-beneficial testimony, I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. Don't worry, Judge. We don't understand. You don't understand. Phoenix doesn't understand. Edgeworth might understand. But basically, no one understands. <laughs> that makes two of us. See? <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> wave my hand there about my client part two. Did judge did the judge ever understand? I'm gonna say no. Um I think with this one, if we're assuming everything in the court trials are correct, then I can bring up the fact that she picked up the wine glass because she thought he was still alive and then put it down when she realized he was dead i'm assuming i can present the evidence here to bring up that fact again from earlier so let's present this objection thank you so much for taking the time to testify mr de killer what is the meaning of that attitude when adrian andrews entered the victim's room your client had no idea that juan carta had been murdered but how how do you know that from this wine glass, Your Honor. The glass. Mr. DeKiller's supposed to client thought Mr. Carter had only fainted, which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. Hmm. But isn't that just part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. If this has been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. I see your point. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now. Witness, how do you explain this, explain this strange phenomena? Isn't it a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you're mistaken. Adrian Andrews really is your client as you claim. Your client should have knowledge of Mr. Corita's death. If not, and that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. Dot dot dot. How strange. Yes? 
Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Phoenix? If the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Objection! objection. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. Well, that was awfully weak objection for the two of you. Anyway, I'm positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. Prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Very well. Right now I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the items the killer left behind to get here. I just know the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. So yeah, Chris, if you missed it earlier, the theme of this entire trial so far, the second half, is waste as much time as possible. <laughs> I kid you not, they will bring, they keep bringing it up over and over and over, and it is just like grating to me. It's Chris is saying, oh yeah, but jumping in with an objection right when the killer questions why you're not objecting is not suspicious at all. He won't catch on at all. Well, apparently everybody in the Phoenix universe is a little slow. Yeah, like we've had to repress multiple statements. We need to press in specific orders. It's just, it's very, it's very tedious so far. But I feel like we're at least semi close to the end now. Request taking. This request came to me all about the week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory and I believe I made no mistakes. Hmm. Hmm. So you physically met your client, huh? That is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Hmm. Oh yeah, Chad. I'm I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking into the future. So let's think ahead before the game gives us a hint. So I think what is about to happen is we're gonna press it for details on the client name. And then when he goes to elaborate, he's probably gonna mess up and use the wrong pronoun. Right? Because when you hear the name Adrian Andrews, Adrian is usually a guy's name. I wonder if he's going to say him at some point if we press him enough. I wonder. It's kind of, a, it is an ambiguous name. It could be used either way. That's the only way I can really see us getting out of this. I mean, it's very stupid from our, our perspective to press him on this potentially. But, you know. Oh, well, it's just Maya. We don't really miss her. So let me see if I can say... Let's press on this statement when you go to the bar. So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? It was with a brief pause. Press further. Witness, I'd like for you to give us a few more details. Always meet my clients as a matter of principle. I've never taken the request by telephone or mail. And why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. The only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. Was that testimony just now of any importance? I'm going to say it's important. Of course, it was very important, Your Honor. If Mr. DeKiller had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he is mistaken. Hmm. So you're saying that his client was really Adrian Andrews? Ah, um, I guess so. You see, it is just as I said. Ugh. I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Welcome to the game writer's decisions. Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax.
Now then, would the witness please continue? Oh. Oh, he didn't actually add it. Oh, do I actually have to say it's not important? Oh, that's weird. We're gonna press further and say not important, because that didn't unlock anything there. I guess that that was a wrong guess, but I didn't get penalized. But I still think ultimately the end goal will be the same. Let's say it was not important. Lying meets his clients is not important. And that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop sidestepping my questions. What do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I feel like the game was like trying to trick the player here. Like just... Like, I think it's one of those scenarios where, like, I knew it's important, but then I have to say it's not important to say it's important. My brain hurts, chat. <laughs> Just, you would think you would have him keep adding to the testimony, but whatever, it's fine. We'll say it's not important, and then if it gives us another prompt, I'll say that's important. Whatever. I've already told you, Mr. Wright. I did. It's only through talking with him. Ah, uh, see, he said him that time. Face to face that I began to trust him. That's when I thought I can trust this person as a client. Hmm. It's true what they say about talking face to face. Well, Mr. Wright, was that important? Okay, that was important this time. Heard what I think I heard just now. And I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was of the utmost importance. Again, I don't understand why he wouldn't just outright kill Maya at this point for us doing what we're about to do, but Phoenix Wright logic, I guess. Huh? Really? If that's the case, witness, please include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. So, I'm just gonna present the profile of the character. So I had the right idea, I didn't input what it wanted specifically. That's usually where I get points off if I'm playing blind. Like, I'll remember it did something stupid, like if I were to replay the game where it was like, I had to say no to say yes. Sort of like the first game, I got caught up a little bit with that in the final case. Also, I love John Doe and Shelly to Killer are separate for some reason, even though we know they're the same. Anyway, let's present Adrian Andrews here. Objection! Objection. I'd like to go over this one more time. And Adrian Andrews at the bar and took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry, but that's an impossible tale. Well, what? Shelly to killer. You've never met the real Adrian Andrews. <laughs> they would just hear like a gunshot or a scream fall by just nothing and he hangs up on the radio. Why would you say that? I I asked myself that question too. I really don't get how she's gonna get away from this, to be honest. Because you made one big slip up. And you kind of make several, whatever. About her. But what is the issue? What did you say just now? About her? If you had met Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you that she's a woman. Oh, oh, he exploded the radio. Yeah, that's definitely resulting in Maya dying. I'm just saying, chat. <laughs> order, order, after banging the gavel. Mr. White, what is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following. Well, he's meets face to face with his clients when taking their request. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, Your Honor. That is exactly the point. That means Mr. The Killer's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. Oh, ill. It's leaking oil. That's gross. So that's one way to make the victim nervous, or not victim, the witness person nervous. 
Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. Oh my gosh, he does. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has something to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is without a doubt a very androgynous name. Hmm, yes, I see. Unluckily for Mr. De Killer, the entire time he was on the stand, and when it stated Adrian Andrews' gender, and so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. What? What is going on? Bang. Shelly de Killer, this court demands an explanation. Um, I think that somehow I must have mixed up this client with another. But does that mean you remember something different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Ah, uh, we're just gonna spit out more lies. Bang. Very well, but this time, please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. Oh, that's true. It could be battery acid. Good point. Versus oil. Request taking part two. Yes, now I remember. I took that request by mail. Didn't he just say he doesn't take it by... There might have been times where I took a job without having met my client. Well, now he's contradicting his earlier statements, right, chat? Come on. Oh my gosh. The request was for the murder of Juan Parada and two or three other smaller things. Well, we're gonna have to figure out what those are. I saw the name at the end of the letter. I thought my client to be a man. Hmm. Hmm. So you took this job through a letter. Didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony. Which means he's definitely lying. Be careful, Phoenix. Break the assassin's testimony completely. It's over for us. I know. Can't make him suspicious. You can't make him suspicious? This isn't suspicious? Wow, what... <laughs> what joyous days they must live in. Ignorance is bliss, chat. But... I think we're okay. Like, we could do this. No, we shouldn't be able to do this. Just be like, what are you doing, Mr. Right? Fall by bang. <laughs> Just, that's it. As long as he's standing there across from me, no matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Now then, let's begin the cross-examination. I mean, why would we rely on the prosecutor to counter this? That's not part of the deal. <laughs> The other guy would literally hear us trying to get him convicted. I don't I don't think this back and forth works the same way that Phoenix thinks it does. Super assassin gets mail. Oh boy, who do I get to kill today? Pretty much. His existence is suspicious. That's also true. Request taking part two. Oh my gosh, chat. I feel like we're near the end, at least. Yes. Okay, so now... What do I press on? Do I press on anything other than the two or three? Because I don't believe the letter at all. I guess I could try to get him to tell me the two or three things. Let's press this, I guess. Hold it, maybe we'll get something to use on other statements. Two or three other things? Yes. And what were these other things? few other things that have nothing to do with this case. Hmm. What should I do? Should I let him slide with that? It'd be really bad if I push his buttons the wrong way and he got mad. Nah, we're gonna press further. Let's make mistakes. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney. Yes? Everything I've said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client. Is why I wonder why... What is pushing you to continue with this cross-examination? Could it be... That you're planning to betray your own client? Uh-oh, angry radio chat. That's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one? Wait! Uh-oh. It's looking really bad. 
Should press my luck. All right, I have to think. Is this worth pursuing? Hell yeah, right, chat? Let's go. Witness, this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what these other jobs your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much of a choice. The bear figurine. The bear figurine? After the assassination of the target, I was to find the figurine. I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And where was that figurine? My question says, why the police don't trace the radio signal anyway? I mean, I don't know how he would know whether or not they were doing it. With the trace, with having his signal. <laughs> right, chat? I don't know. It was inside Mr. Karuda's suitcase. And then what did you do next? I did it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client. Interesting. Hmm. This information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you just taste what you just stated in your testimony. Hmm. As you wish. Um This is kind of one of those weird things. It's one of those things where, like, we were told that it was handed over to somebody else. Is presenting the figurine good enough to bring up that plot point, or am I going too early? That's what I'm thinking about too now. Because we know originally the figurine was handed off, and it wasn't to Miss Andrews. I don't know if this is good enough. We, we presumably don't risk very much for me doing this. So I'm going to hit objection here, I guess. Worst thing that happens is I go repress some other statements, I suppose. Shelly the Killer. You really had given the bear to Miss Andrews, and this item should not have been inside it. This item? I see where you're going. Yep, that's where I'm going. Where is everyone going? Do I need to pack a suitcase? Your Honor, please think back to Miss Andrews' testimony. I was gonna burn it for her sake. Oh, we're gonna go with that angle? I mean, I feel like that's not good enough, but whatever, that's fine. If he wants to go that angle instead, I could kind of see it, but... I mean, she, that just means she's lying on the stand. I don't think that's as decisive as if we called, like, Will Power's testimony back, but whatever. If even for a single minute, the spare had actually been in Miss Andrew's hands, I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note out and burned it. Judge, please, indeed. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. So that's where you two were going. So by the very fact that this suicide note was still inside the bear, tells us your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. Which means... It means, Your Honor, that it is impossible for Adrian Andrews to be the client. Oh! -ho. Again, he should just kill Maya right here. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order! Uh, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I... I'm sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You must wish to break your end of our agreement. No, that's not... That's enough. If that is your intention, then there is only one thing for me to do. Wait, please. Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter I must attend to. Hold it! Hold it. No, please, not that. Please wait. Mr. Attorney. Bring this trial to a speedy end, and I may stay my hand. Otherwise... Uh, uh, we're having to freak out. What in the Mr. Wright are you? Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. I mean, Judge, that was a pretty clear threat. It's a pretty damn clear threat, right, chat? Like, might not know it's Maya, but come on. 
Do you think there is a need to hear more testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should. Hedgeworth, we can't do this. We keep this up, Maya, Shill. Ugh. The prosecution. I... What has come over everyone? Even you are. The prosecution rests. What is going on around here? The prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. What? What? They should just throw this case out for mistrial. Every everybody has done something wrong officially in this case. There is no way this should be allowed to continue, <laughs> right, chat? To just be like, it's over. Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. If the prosecution rests with no further questions, then the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. That would mean that Shelly DeKiller's client is... Adrian Andrews. Uh. Mr. Wright. Oh, wrong person speaking. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. If I end the trial here right now, then your client, Madame Guard, would be declared innocent. In his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. Hmm. Miss Andrews would be charged with murder. Bang. The prosecution has no further questions, so we'll now hear the defense's final remarks. Thank you, Imperimeter, for the good luck. Hopefully you get some rest. Bailiff, please bring the defendant, Matt on guard, to the stand. Items found for the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could. It looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands. Dude, did the old guy finally decide? Oh, that's true. Chris didn't see the other side of Unguard. He's hiding something other under the hair. Maybe we'll see it in a minute or two. To be honest, I can't truly think of you as an innocent... Or, excuse me, I can't think of you as a truly innocent and good person. You've done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. Huh. There we go. The reveal for Chris. So, I guess even the old funny duddy figured me out. Mr. On Guard, what an atrocious lawyer I have, giving his own client up like this. And that refreshing like a spring breeze crap. It's just as atrocious, don't you agree? Anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Should I side with justice or should I save Maya's life? You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? But, but if I did that, Maya will die. But if he says I'm innocent, Miss Andrews will be charged as the murderer. If I say he's guilty or not guilty, either choice I make, someone's life is gonna end. All hinges on what I choose. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. The person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews. Then your client, Mr. Matt on guard, is innocent. Hmm. There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer's gonna say what I want, aren't you? Right. I can't. I can't do this, but I have to decide something. Can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. My client, Matt on guard, is... Ooh, I don't think I saved recently. That's kind of a problem. Uh... I didn't see the line, though. Actually, we might be fine. 
we might be fine. I wanted to see what would happen if I hit not guilty here, but I didn't get the ability to pause leading up to the red screen. When the screen flashed red, I think that's when it stopped me from being able to save. I could also just game over real quick, but I'm really trying to think of back when we saved. That would have been like two testimonies ago. I don't know if I want to do that. We'll double check at the end. Maybe revisit this. We'll say... <sighs> well... I guess I could just rest Okay, so regardless if this advances the trial or not, I'm going to say guilty. If this gives me the other thing that I want, fine. If it advances the trial either way, fine. We'll just go back to this. We are waiting for your answer, Mr. Wright. Man on guard, your client deserves an answer. Maya, I'm sorry. Save right after this one. We'll save right here. Because I was part of the way through the trial. But yeah, we have not saved in quite some time in the other slot, sadly. We'll leave that one there for now. Maya, I'm sorry. Mountain Guard is... Oh, we got interrupted. Okay, our choice didn't matter here. Objection, chat. That's why I was curious if there was potentially a different option there. So our choice didn't matter at all. Francesca von Karma. But now we have it set up for later, because I do need that save eventually. Where was he keeping that glass? I don't know how he kept it in prison, I'm not sure. Oh, as you can see, don't you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? This is exactly why you should never take your eyes off that scuffy fool. My client is von Karma. Yeah, can we get her accused of murder? <laughs> Did you bring them? The final pieces, do you have them? You should know better than to ask Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Avon Karma is perfect in every way. The evidence is here in perfect condition. Don't worry about Scruffy. He's fine and his injuries are minor. To fill Chris in, he crashed his car earlier. <laughs> All the items are inside this. Wait, did she take his trench coat off? What a filthy old coat this is. That's Gumshoes. I can spot his tattered rags anywhere. I apologize for its ugliness, but there's nothing else to wrap the items in. I fought long and hard this whole trial. All for what is inside that raggedy coat. I'm sure that inside that coat lies a crucial piece of evidence. Your Honor. Inside that filthy coat are the defense's final pieces of evidence. Your final evidence? This trial is already over. All that remains is for me to hand down my verdict. I do not believe that any evidence presented now would change the outcome of this trial. What? Objection. Your Honor, it is our duty to examine every piece of evidence down to the last. I request that Miss Von Karma be allowed to present these pieces of evidence. Hmm. I suppose you are right, Mr. Edgeworth. I grant permission to do so. However, this one obvious rule applies here. These items do not bring up any new points, and they will not be accepted by this court. Now then, Miss Von Karma, if you please. These pieces of evidence are items left behind by the killer during his escape from the police. Hmm. Must have been in quite a rush. Yes, your honor. The killer left three pieces of evidence. Somewhere among the evidence we're about to see, there'll be something that will turn this whole situation around. Like a miracle. I'm sure of it. That is all we can hope for. The first item is a pistol. Does the killer's pistol have anything to do with this case? Question. Does that pistol have anything re any relation to the case? We have yet to perform a ballistics test, so I can't say anything for certain. However, I believe it has something to do with this case. At least with me. <laughs> she did get shot earlier. Why is he like dot 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 question mark? Did you forget she got shot, Phoenix? Hold on, was the killer driving around while testifying? 
I mean, maybe he very briefly got away and immediately went like four buildings over and just kept having a testimony. Not really sure. That's the pistol that he used to shoot you, isn't it? That's what I believe, yes. Oh. I kept the bullet they removed from my shoulder as a sort of memento. I'm sure it will be an excellent sample for the rest. Oh, excuse me, for the test. So that's the pistol that was used to shoot Francisca. Probably not going to help us very much. This will add to the court record, a small caliber pistol that is thought to have been fired by the killer at Francisca. <laughs> I think he straight up forgot she got shot. I guess out of sight, out of mind kind of deals. Mon Karma says, the second piece of evidence is this videotape. I bet the killer took that from Unguard Mansion. Let's question. Have you checked the contents of that tape? Unfortunately, there was no time to. Oh, yeah. But I would speculate that this tape is very important. Why would you say that? Because he came back to his hideout for it. The killer went back for it. That's right. Looks like he was trying to recover it. He injured three of the officers at the site. Hmm. But somehow, it looks like they managed to protect it from the killer. Shelly the killer is no ordinary man. Video tape out of the court record. One of items retrieved. The killer violently tried to recover it. Contents unknown. Last piece of evidence is this bellboy's uniform. Is that a uniform from the Gatewater Hotel? Let's question. Is that used during the crime? I'm almost certain it was. See even a pair of black leather gloves in one of the pockets. There's no doubt about it. Hillary was wearing this on the night of the murder. There's one thing I found interesting about this uniform. And what is that? There's a button missing on this uniform. A button? It's a very unique button. I'm sure if we were able to recover it. It would provide us with an interesting clue. Hmm. A boy's uniform added to court record. This is all I have to present, Your Honor. Hmm. Just as I thought. And what is that, Your Honor? I'm sure we were we under normal circumstances, these items from Shelley to Killer's hideout would be very important clues. However, our question is not who did the killing. It is who is the client. Yes, that is correct. And these three items do not tell us anything about that. Thank you for your hard work, Miss Von Karma. You may step down now. Hold it. Wait, Your Honor. Please allow me to examine this new evidence. Overruled. This court already has the evidence it needs to hand down a verdict. Wonderful. Absolutely splendid. This judge is such a brilliant man, isn't he? Is this the end? Phoenix. I knew it. There's no such thing as a miracle in this world, is there? I think you're wrong. I think they do exist. Is it by the fact that literal magic is happening? <laughs> but you have to make that miracle happen. You've come this far. You can't give up now. But, but, no matter how you think about it, it's... It's... Try. For my sake. Just think about it for a second. There are two ways out of this situation for us. Two? The first... Make Unguard wish from the bottom of his soul for a guilty verdict. Huh? The killer will always place his client's wishes first. Unguard himself wishes to be convicted, then we will let his hostage go. That may be true, but that's asking me to do the impossible. Not really, it's pretty straightforward actually. The second way. Force the killer to end his contract with Unguard. The killer were to no longer think of Unguard as his client, then he would let Maya go. Mia, that's even more impossible. He's a man who values his duty towards his clients above all else. I know both of these seem like impossible feats at first, but if you could make either one happen, it would truly be a miracle. The bigger problem is, Judge has already said he doesn't need any more evidence. The pieces he was just shown, he's not accepting them. Phoenix, think things through from the other side. Isn't that what has always worked for us? The other side? Wait, does she mean... You mean, to turn things around? Phoenix, Judge says he doesn't need the evidence. If that's the case, then who does need it? Person who needs the evidence? Okay, I'm gonna save here. 
This is one of my lines. Let's save here. And continue forward. The defense, prosecution, and the judge. I've seen all the pieces of evidence. And that is how we've come to know the truth. There's one person who's yet to see them all. A person does not know the truth. A truth. Maybe what will bring the miracle in the end. Yeah, I was going to say, when she was talking about the other side, I was going to say, quick, summon Maya. There are no objections this time, correct? Now then, I will pronounce my verdict. Why don't we all respectfully sit back and listen, kids? Objection! Objection. I have already told you, Mr. Wright. This court does not need any more evidence. I'm not saying it is us that needs the evidence, Your Honor. Then you want to show the evidence to that person? Objection, indeed. Yes, Your Honor. Please, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, for you to ask with such passion, we'll grant you one chance. One chance. Please show your evidence to who you think is the right person. Objection. That's impossible. To turn this situation around in one try. One try. That is all I will permit. I have to try to remember. Everything has happened up to this point. Think, Phoenix. Think. Must be a way to save Maya while taking on guard down at the same time. Bang. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's not waste any more time. Who would you like to show the evidence to? So, let's advance a little further. Let's present Maya here. Take that! Take that. Uh, I see, and now... Oh yeah, you know what? I'm gonna make another save here. I think this is actually a little closer to the bad ending, quote-unquote. Alright, let's mess up this trial on purpose. Tell this court what one piece of evidence you would like to show this person. Well, first I would like to say we got one piece again. But chat, the moment of truth has come. We have to fail this, because we get one chance. We're presenting the badge! The true ending! Present, take that. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, um, I don't have anything to say to this. Hmm. How about you, Miss Von Karma? Well, I was just shot, so... Bang. I'm afraid I cannot allow the defense to continue. What? No one understands what you're talking about anymore. Wait, please, one more ch- Bang. That is enough, Mr. White. I will now state my verdict. This court finds the defendant mad on guard. Not guilty. Yay, we did it! Badge was the hero we needed. Bang. That is all. This court is adjourned. Yeah, bad ending time, or badge ending. And just like that, the case came to an end. I ran away from the courtroom and wandered the streets alone. <laughs> God, that's so stupid, I'm sorry. Never saw Maya again. Wait, why didn't you see Maya again? The killer is a man of his word, so I'm sure he released her as promised. Heard the verdict of Miss Andrews' trial a few days later. She was found guilty, of course. The miracle never happened. Maybe it was never meant to. Because a miracle is something that doesn't exist. Wow, we destroyed his entire life. I mean, you can't spell bad ending. Or excuse me, you can't spell badge without bad. Doors closed. Yeah, that was the best ending. Anyway, let's actually beat the trial. And now, tell us this piece of evidence. I won't use the one piece counter again. Alright, so let's actually think about this. Um... Oh, actually, this is too soon. I just realized, this is actually too soon. Uh-oh, did I mess it up? One second, chat. Oh, I might have made it too soon. 
I wanted to take it back there and I forgot the other. Ooh, hopefully I didn't save over the other save. One second, chat. I might have made a mistake. One moment. Also, it doesn't let me quit out of this, so I'm just gonna hold skip. I need to choose a different person there. One second. I should have made a save before then, because I had a feeling I would do that. And I believe I left the other one where it is, which is fine. We're good, we're good, we're good. I made a backup save because I made a note I would probably do this, and I did because I'm very tired. <laughs> it, it this this case has gone on for an eternity. It is like almost one o'clock. I wanted to be done like an hour ago. <laughs> so let's try this again. We should have one from very slightly before that, because I did it right before we chose. So let's proceed forward. Alright, so let's skip through the dialogue. We're gonna go to the point where we have to present to one person. Since we don't make any choices here. So yeah, we're just gonna skip through like two minutes of dialogue, which is fine. It's not too bad. We at least made a save at one of my safety points. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think I over the overrode the one where it was right as we we're making this decision, which is fine. It didn't take very long to get back to. So we're just going to skip on through. So I believe in the meantime, what we could talk about is we're probably going to have to show him the evidence that he was being videotaped. So if we present to him the evidence that he was videotaped, we'll consider it a betrayal of the client. So he'll no longer consider him the client. And then that'll be when he finally goes around. So that's what my theory is. So we're gonna select Shelly to kill her. And then I can present him the videotape. Because he probably hasn't seen what's on it. Or else he wouldn't still be acting like Mad on Guard is his client. So yeah, now we're just gonna get about here-ish and make a safety save. Yeah, so there's just a reminding us how we're gonna do this. That's fine. Yeah, let's make a safety save in case I somehow miss and put something. Let's save over... Probably this one. There we go. So we should be good. But yeah, there are so many lines of dialogue, <laughs> but we're almost there. There we go. Now we get to make our choice. See, so yeah, I'm going to select Shelly to kill her. And then what we're going to do... Be good to go here. They're gonna object about one try, yada yada. See, because it, it doesn't let you it doesn't let you save right at this dialog box. So I, I wrote a dialogue box before that, but I had no context for it. So good to know there were like eight or nine lines I could have probably saved a little closer, but hey, that's what you get for blindly picking a line <laughs> without trying to figure it out. So let's go ahead and switch it to present to Shelly the Killer. It's kind of funny I can also present to John Doe technically, but yeah, let's use Shelly the Killer. I see. And now tell this court one piece of evidence you would like to show this person. So we got the videotape from earlier. Take that. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, um, I think there's some merit in showing this evidence to that witness. Bang. Bailiff, please bring in the transceiver from earlier. All right. Looks like I managed to convince him. Maya, she's okay, right? And did I tell you to concern yourself with bringing about a speedy end to this trial? Now then, if I understand correctly, you should show me one piece of evidence. Yes, one is all I need. I have here a videotape. It was found at your hideout. Heard you injured three officers in your attempt to get this back. That was most regrettable. However, it was an order from my client. I was told to protect that videotape. I thought so. I'm afraid I seem to have failed in that regard. Do you know the contents of this tape? I was suddenly told by my client not to watch it. So I have absolutely no idea. 
Actually, you are on this tape. Me? There was a video camera hidden at the crime scene. <laughs> oh, the giant bear, it's so dumb. Your actions were being recorded. What? Is that true, Mr. Wright? Who, who was it that planted the camera? Well, the only person who could have placed the camera at the scene of the crime would have been your client, naturally. Dot 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 exclamation mark. That, that was Adrian Andrews. Be quiet and listen, your honor. Yes, sir. Wow, we whipped the judge again. Your client specified a place and time for you, isn't that right? Yes. That was so they could film you. I had no idea. Mr. Wright, why would my client do such a thing? I would like to know why. Why did Man on Guard film the crime scene? The reason why he did this is my ticket out of this whole mess. There's only one reason why your client would secretly film the crime scene. They wanted to see if Juan get his. <laughs> Didn't trust your skills. No, we're gonna go with wanted blackmail on you. Nice try though. Your client once told me something very interesting. We were talking about you and this is what they said. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe anyone, least of all assassins. Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Such sort of above blackmail. Yes, that's where the video comes in. With that, I could keep him at bay, even blackmail him if I want. All options are great, says Dango. They are quite good. Your client didn't trust you at all. They were thinking of using this video to blackmail you. What do you have to say to that, Shelly the Killer? Oh, ill. Not the weird. Like, look at how stylized the radio is, and then look at the weird globules. <laughs> like, they just look like MS Paint drawings. Like, what the heck? Why? Why do they clash so hard with the style of everything here? Uh, uh, oh no! Or oh, excuse me. It looks like, looks like I was being deceived from the very beginning. Yeah, it's like they're not quite globules. I just, there's something else. Yes, by a natural. That is the kind of person they are. Your client is a person who thinks and plots how to use the people around them. They're like teardrops almost. It's very weird, but they're also kind of... I don't know, it's just something in the way it's drawn doesn't match anything else in the game setting. Protect themselves from any and all dangers that may arise. That is the true nature of your client. I have one question for the witness. Yes? You told us- oh, excuse me. <clears throat> you told us one thing numerous times during your testimony. You said you detest traitors most of all. Yes, that's right. But what if that traitor was your own client? What would you do then? That's obvious. I would break our contract in that case. And then, that client would become my next target. For the honor of the get uh, I can't talk anymore. For the honor of the De killer name, even if it takes an eternity. Chad, I'm begging for this case to end. <laughs> I'm really, I'm feeling really tired and I'm like, oh my gosh, it never ends. We have presented so many pieces of evidence. I'm oh, like, please, so long. It like we did do a sign thing in the beginning, but it is like a solid four hours of Phoenix Fright. This had no right to be this long. I'm sorry. It's just like every five minutes they interrupt the case to go, we can't do it because of Maya, or we gotta stall for more time. And it's like they just say nothing and do nothing. It's just, just like, oh my gosh. I need a I need a moment. I'm gonna take a drink. I'm gonna hopefully be within like three options of beating this game. I swear, chat. Oh, let me get done with this trial, please. For the honor of the, the killer name, even if it takes an eternity. Well, it feels like it's taking an eternity. I would follow that person to the ends of the earth to exact my punishment. Red screen. Uh, 
I see. That's all I wanted to know. Yeah, we're gonna save our final thoughts for another time. We're, we're, we're wrapping up as soon as this is over. So the traitor becomes the killer's next target. Ah, I get it. This is how we'll turn this case around. Mr. Wright. Yes? My contract with my client is over as of now. I seem to have a new job on my hands. I will now return to you your precious item. And then the judge is like, I hear some bribery taking place in court. Throw this witness out and get a new defense attorney. We'll retry tomorrow. <laughs> right, chat? What the? I'm not an item. Beep. Maya, thought I'd never see you again. Oh, thank goodness. Um, this trial appears to have come to its conclusion. However, I... Actually, I'm sort of... I don't know quite what... Ow! Oh. Miss Von Karma, where did that... She always has you in our sights. Now, I do believe it's time to finally hand down a verdict. Oh, there we go. He's looking nervous. Mr. On Guard. Looks like somehow you got what you wanted. You finally received the acquittal you wanted so badly. Should be happy. But before that, I'd like to make one final statement. Sometime in the near future, one very betrayed assassin may appear for you. Needless to say, my man is very good at what he does. I'm sure you would understand what I mean if you watched this video. Eh. Help me. Now then, Your Honor, the verdict, if you please. Is this all right with you, Mr. Wright? We've finally reached the end of a very long battle. It doesn't feel like it. Whether he's convicted or acquitted, there's no escape for him now. Go on, Phoenix. Be whichever way your heart tells you. Wait, but if we say that he's not guilty, we just make the other person go to jail? <laughs> Wait, how does that work? What do you mean, plead the way your heart does? <laughs> what, what do you mean? <laughs> Wait, no. Wait, that doesn't actually make sense. Wait. I could just make Adrian go to jail for no reason? Um. Right, Chief. <laughs> what, what happens if I plead not guilty? Congratulations, Mr. Matt on guard. Please make sure to savor every moment of what little time you have left. Your Honor, as always, the defense pleads not guilty. Very well, this court finds the defendant Matt on guard. Hold it. Please wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's just like, I mean, we did that earlier and we definitely got Adrian Andrews sent to jail. So this is kind of messed up. Why does it allow me to make that choice and say it doesn't matter? so wrong what's the matter if if i get a not guilty i'll i'll be ki killed i i'm i'm no oh gross not guilty ah! oh he smeared jam all over his face that's not healthy that's jam's supposed to go on sandwiches not on the face as always, it looks like we have uncovered the real truth. We? I don't remember you helping out much in this. Mr. Edgeworth, how is Matt on guard? I have left Miss Von Karma in charge of his incarceration. I'm sure he's getting a full course meal of whip leather right about now. Very good. That was a close one, wasn't it, witness? Yes. I plan to pay my debt to society for my own crime, Your Honor. First time I was called to the witness stand during this trial, all I felt was despair. She must be talking about the time Edgeworth really went after her. I guess she's trying to forgive him for what he did. Oh, like this trial is still going. This witness, how should I say, put in... How should I put this? Has an illness. Yeah, that was said earlier. If you're going to say you would choose death, that is no concern to me. That was said earlier. But after that... When I was alone at the detention center, that's the first time I really saw myself for who I am. And today, when the two of you used your combined strength to convict Matt, 
I... I felt like I'd finally been saved. And then she just gets hauled off to jail for, uh, falsifying testimony, falsifying evidence. <laughs> Time to go to jail. Right, chat? <laughs> wow, this is the first time I've ever seen her smile. I'm really happy that you two were in charge of this case. Oh my gosh. I really don't know how to express how I feel at this moment. This is... This is the first time I've ever felt comfortable with who I am. Thank you so much, everybody. There are so many pieces of evidence. So many, chat. Five hours combined, we're a competent lawyer. All right, AJ, no one cares. Get off the stage, please, pretty much. Looks like we have finally resolved everything at last. As for myself, there's still a few things I'm confused about. Somebody whip the judge, please. But everyone seems to be in good spirits, and that's good enough for me. No, that's not how the court works, judge. <laughs> no. That is all. This court is adjourned. Bang. March 23rd, 5.14 p.m., District Court Defendant Lobby Number 3. Um... I don't really know what the final item is. I guess I'll save right before then. You were great out there, Phoenix. But a dead out there was right, wasn't it? This is the first time you've not gotten your client off. You've gotten them a guilty verdict this time. Also phrasing. But you have to look at past all that to what's really important. Now realize there's something more than just getting a not guilty, right? Yes, I understand now. Phoenix, think back for a moment. Think to the moments before Miss Von Karma arrived with the final pieces of evidence. Think about the incredible decision you had to make. <laughs> yeah, where we presented the attorney badge, I remember that. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. Can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. S should I side with justice? Yeah, yeah, that, that was earlier. Why are we flashbacking to the whole scene? Is he guilty? Or is he not guilty? Those were your choices then, and your answer. Your answer spoke to, to what being a lawyer means to you. <laughs> I said he was not guilty. So what is that, what does that say about Phoenix? Wait, I don't think I don't think that's quite as inspirational as she thinks it is. Oh, you have no idea, Chris. We were doing like double, triple flashbacks at one point. It was horrendous. Some of it was like cross chapter, and I kind of get them. But one time we legitimately flashed back to something that was like five minutes ago in the same portion. I was like, why? And then we did it again for clarity. Right. Edgeworth. I have good news. Maya's now safe in police custody. Really? Earls, you're telling us the truth, right, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, she's quite safe. She's on her way here as we speak in a patrol car. Ah, uh, Mystic Maya. Miss Maya is safe. You did it. Re you really did it, Nick. Ow, she punches deceptively hard for a kid. I I believed in you. You've saying to myself, Mr. Nick will save her. Mr. Nick will save her. Wah. Well, uh, um, thanks. Oh, what's wrong? Miss Von Karma. Um, about earlier. Uh, thanks. Ow. Why are you still smiling, Mr. Phoenix Wright? You... you lost. Your perfect win record has now been crushed. And yet you are still happy. I don't think you'll ever understand, Miss Von Karma. How dare you? We'll get another save slightly closer to making a decision here. Don't worry. She may in time. After all, I was like that myself until a year ago. To be fair, we didn't earn that win record. His performance enhancing ghosts, pretty much. I like how they're talking about a miracle happening as we're literally channeling the spirits of the dead. I feel like the message is kind of undercut by the absolute BS on the defense's side. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, ah, oh, yes, a miracle you will make happen, like all the falsified evidence or <laughs> purposely misleading t testimony or... Edgeworth? For my own personal victories and for my guilty verdicts. He's every dirty trick in the book, and so my record remains spotless. 
but... A man appeared and stood fast against me. I fought him in my usual manner and tasted my first defeat. I felt like I had lost everything because of that. And then... It was my turn to sit in the defendant's chair. And I was saved by that person I called my enemy. I couldn't forgive myself for all that happened. So I left the prosecutor's office. And I left that note. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death because it's very overly dramatic and very stupid to write, yes. Hmm, as well you should have. A prosecutor who has shamed himself with defeat should crawl into a hole and die. <laughs> sure, Von Karma. But that was not what happened. After I left the prosecutor's office, I finally came to realize something. It was in that moment of clarity that everything began to change. What foolish nonsense. We prosecutors use everything we can to attack the defendant. But every time we did so... Objection! No matter how desperate the situation, instead of giving up like most people... Shelly Von Karma, maybe. That man would hold strong with his undying faith. Did we ever really hold strong as Phoenix? I feel like almost every other case we had like a near mental breakdown on the stand. In this case, we did break down on the stand. <laughs> Everything we can to attack the defendant, including whips, that's also true. And then before I knew it, I began to trust in that man as well. <laughs> well, Edgeworth made another poor life choice. What? You trusted your enemy? Doesn't matter how many underhanded tricks a person uses. The truth will always find a way to make itself known. The only thing we can do is fight with the knowledge we hold. And everything we have. Erasing the paradoxes one by one. It's never easy. We claw and scratch for every inch. But we always eventually reach that one single truth. This, I promise you. The truth? Yes. That's the reason why prosecutors and defense attorneys exist. But I'm sure you knew that already, didn't you, right? That's why you couldn't forgive me. This man who went into hiding. Isn't that right? This man who only had his sights set on victory. Who ran away into the night. Ah! Is... Is Mr. Edgeworth right, Mr. Nick? He really let me down. When you disappeared, I felt... Betrayed. The reason I decided to become a lawyer to begin with is because I believed in the things you said to me. Those years ago. Child Edgeworth there, chat. And you, you betrayed your own words. That's why one year ago, I made up my mind. Decided that Miles Edgeworth I knew had died. At least that's what I told myself. You pathetic fool. It's Von Karma. I don't want to hear that wretched whimpering of a disgraced loser. <laughs> Damn. A Von Karma is someone who is destined to be perfect, she says without the perfect win record. Miles Edgeworth, you are no longer worthy. No longer worthy of being a Von Karma. And neither am I. It's over. It's all over. Francisca threw something on the ground just now. This is... an electromagnetic receiver. Isn't that the thing she used to track Detective Gumshoe? I'll return this to the precinct... precinct later. There's something else. Ah, isn't that Miss Von Karma's whip? Oh my god, she gave up the whip? <gasps> uh, what is she going to do in court? Oh my gosh, the characterization? Can't throw this at me at the final, like, five minutes of the game. I'll never set foot in another courtroom again. I'm sure that's what she's saying by this action. I, I mean, she should be in jail. <laughs> should she be walking to a police car right now? I'm just saying. You should keep this right. Um, okay. Nick! M -m 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 maya Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya!
Next game, Phoenix starts whipping people. Upgrading your whip to a pistol whip, maybe. Also, I'd just like to see... Holy, this case is not ending. <laughs> I'm just like... We're, we're close. We're like, we literally have to go to the point where we present an item and we are done. But it is just like... Mmm. Mmm, they're just taking their time with the chat. We're like 10, 15 minutes since the case ended. It's still not over. But anyway... Oh, Nick, I knew you would come through. You got on guard convicted like I knew you would. Yeah, there is so much filler dialogue. I fully agree with that, Dango. Holy. But on top of that, you even rescued me. Well, of course I did. You know I would never desert you. But we sure pressed our luck with this trial. Really lucky to be standing here. Yeah, there's really no reason that trial should have been able to go on that long without Maya dying. Whatever, whatever. Look, it's over, okay? Besides, if I did croak, I'd just come back and haunt you like a bad ghost through Pearly. At least she knows. That is actually probably a true statement. No, oh, Nick, I knew my sister's ghost would come through. That's also true. Is it really that easy to do something like that? Thanks a lot, Nick. Um, don't mention it. Maya. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, I'm relieved you're all right. Hey. Looks like you made some real progress, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, well, I suppose I'm a little different from who I was a year ago. Huh. Oh, her stomach is haunted. Ralgrrrr. All right. I think it's time we get out of this depressing place. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he's questioning whether or not ghosts could come back. They, they can't let Mia stay stay dead. Huh? Where are we going? Food, Nick. Food. Grub. Chow. I'm starved. I'm so hungry. Even you look like a nice juicy burger on a bun to me, Nick. Y you think I look like a burger? A prime rib at least. Come with us, Mr. Edgeworth, please. Oh, um, if you insist. All right. So how about we hit up our usual burger joint? Don't be silly, Nick. Huh? This case messed up that awesome evening. On the way of my gourmet food. Decided we'd make it up by having yet another feast. Another feast? Come on, Nick. Food! What? Why, why are we allowed back in here? Anyway, March 23rd, 7.30 p.m. Gatewater Hotel, Hopetail Lobby. Hey, pal. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Oh, there you go. That's a new look. Gumshoe, are you alright? Yeah, but I'm really embarrassed. I didn't think I would hit a telephone pole, of all things. Telephone pole. And it wasn't a red light that got him? You did it. You did it again, city boy. Felt like my dear old heart was gonna give out on me, and I ain't joking. Yeah, it was more exciting than the very last episode of The Steel Samurai. Thanks. Now looky here, Mr. Snooty Prosecutor. Don't you reckon y'all bu bullied Mr. Wright too hard? You don't start being a lot nicer to him. He might even just kick it. Tonight, even. Um, I'll keep that in mind. Well, come on now. Everyone gather round. Y'all gonna get your picture taken by a genuine professional photographer. Looks like Lotta brought herself a new camera. Well, pal... At least we can put this messy case behind us now. Come on, tonight's all about eating, so let's go chow down, pal. Amen to that, pal. Or amen. I guess it depends on how you pronounce it. Amen. Whatever. Context, I suppose. You know, when you think about it, you were the one who saved the... Oh, you were the one who saved the day, detective. Huh? Me? You really think so? He's right. If it wasn't for the three items you took, I think this trial would have had a very different ending. Oh, I don't want to see Old Bag. I hope Old Bag does not show up, but she probably will. Oh, uh, well, you know, it's... Oh, ho, 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 huh? Wait, that's odd. When are off with the things from the killer's hideout? I'm sure I took four things in total, sir. What? Four? Yeah, sure put one of the items in my coat pocket. There was a fourth item? Oh, come on, y'all. It's over. Oh, boy, I tell you. 
really are something else. Between getting accused of murder and getting kidnapped, never a dull moment with you, huh? Huh, <laughs> you think? Why does she look so happy about that? Being shut away for two whole days, weren't you scared? Yeah, it was really scary. It felt so hopeless. So to keep my mind off of things, I drew a picture. Sounds like y'all had it rough, gal. Where's this picture of yours? Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see Mystic Maya's picture. Hmm. You know, I don't know where it went. Aw, that's too bad. Well, it's alright. It wasn't anything important anyway. Ah. It sure is nice to finally see the most smiling again. Beep beeps. Fun karma approaches. What is it, Edgeworth? This thing is picking something up. Oh, that's... That's Miss Von Karma's receiver. Oh, thanks to her. The most awful experience of my life, sir. Can't believe she stuck a tracking device on me. That's odd. Even though you're standing right here. Tracking device seems to be in a different location. Oh, probably busted or something, sir. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm afraid it's about time for me to excuse myself. Still have some work to do. Huh? But Mr. Edgeworth, you haven't eaten anything yet. You've eaten way too much, you glutton. <laughs> wow, Phoenix. I had, a f I had fun tonight. Now if you'll excuse me. Wait. What? Uh, okay, I'm gonna save here in case this is where we do the item. I mean, that was like 10 minutes ago, or six minutes ago. Holy. I just wanna say, thanks, Edgeworth. You really saved me out there. Hmm. If anyone should be saying thanks, it should be me, right? I feel like words alone aren't enough here. And if there's anything I could give to express how I feel... <laughs> I'm gonna be my attorney badge in a moment. Um... If I had to guess, I'd probably give him the whip for extra dialogue, so I'm going to try it. Take that! What's this? Thank you. It's all thanks to you two. You... and her. No need to thank me. I was only doing my job. Looks like Mr. Edgeworth has left, Mr. Nick. Hey, Mystic Maya! Hmm? Yes, Pearly? Guess you two could go back to being lovey-dovey, right? You and Mr. Nick, I mean. Pearly, would you cut it out already? You're embarrassing me. Um, anyway. So who's paying for this lovely dinner party? As if you need to ask. Everyone say thank you to Nick. Huh? Oh, yeah. Kind of at the point where I can't even buy instant noodles, pal. I kind of already put your name on the bill. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Got me a situation just like that myself. There's this camera shop in this hotel, see? And I just bought myself this good old beauty here. Better be any... It better be anyhow for $3,000. Huh? 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 Actually, I reckon y'all bought it for me since it's on your tab and all. Huh? 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 Isn't this great, Mr. Nick? Yeah, Nick. Why do I suddenly feel like screaming? Oh, you don't need to hold back now, you hear? Yeah, pal, time to let it all out. It's gonna be the first time I hear the real you. Go on, it's been a while since I heard you say it. I've been busy being a hostage and all. All right, then. If you say so. Objection, chat. Oh, what a struggle. Man, that gimmick of the trial. The first trial was not great, but it was passable. That second trial, though, was really hard to get through. Holy. It's excruciating how much dialogue there was. Oh, excuse me. I mean, I've escaped death three times now. Pretty cool, huh? I feel like a pro. It did not need to be that long, for sure. So I guess I'll keep an eye out since I wasn't looking at the screen for dialogue. So I missed one line from her, I think. Oh, well. So happy that you could say Mystic Maya, Mr. Nick. I'm so happy for the two of you. Speaking of which, I think this hotel is a popular place for honeymooners. So I sort of made reservations for the two of you, just in case.
Well, pal, looks like I'm back on the force again. Mr. Edgeworth had a long talk with the chief. He got me reinstated for my sake. Pretty said things like letting that one go is bad for all society. I knew it. Crashing headlong to everything is the only way to live, pal. Oh, <laughs> made my controller vibrate. I guess he's back on the police force. So it's like nothing in this game really mattered, ultimately. <laughs> Undoing all progress. I'm Maggie Bird. I'm retiring this uniform as of today, sir. I'm going to be a waitress from now on. And bring smiles and joy to people who come by the restaurant, sir. Hope you stop by sometime, Mr. Wright. Oh, wow. She just qu quits being a detective? That kind of sucks. Damn, chat. She got the bad ending. Oh, not this character. Hmm, yes. Are you here to visit a patient? Hmm. Doctor, Director Hody. Oh, recently. Hmm, yes. That girl, you know. Haven't seen her around. Hmm, yes. But I remember. Even if I laid so much as an eye on her, it would go crack. Hmm. It didn't matter if I got whipped, though. Hmm. Hmm, yes. Oh. Get him off the screen. I will be very thankful to never voice that character ever again. I hope he does not appear in any other future games. It's time to begin our quest of world circus domination, sweetie. Now that the world we know we're serious, plan to make a famous, a fabulous flight to Zimbabwe. Hey, Max, what do you think Zimbabwe's like? Do you think there's castles made of cake and bunnies who could talk? I think if there are any talking bunnies, even they won't laugh at most jokes. The follow-up I never needed. Phoenix right three. Phoenix has a whip and his new assistant is hottie. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. There's no way these jokes are going to fall on deaf ears. I'm, I'm going to be more contemporary with my humor. Mo curls. R -r Represent. We got our new act all worked out. Prepare for the hallelujah quarters. Oh, wrong voice, actually. Whatever. Say something, will you? You're supposed to start this off. Get on with it. It's hard to switch voices very rapidly like that, I will admit. That is kind of hard for me to do without pausing. I wasn't expecting a second character there. Anyway, Trillo's there. What's this? Strat, it's just an ordinary electric razor recharging on its stand. Can't believe this, really. How long did they plan on making me do this? Ah, oh, but it's Edgy Poo's idea, so that means it must have been had a deep hidden meaning. But why do I get the feeling? They wouldn't forget about me, would they? Oh, I was never like this in the old days. Everyone thought the world of me. They used to call me Queen Wendy and treat me royalty. And everybody's ever heard this. Gonna feel the pain me kill you. Sticking through the burn. Speaking of burn, playing with fire is very dangerous. Because of that, the three words on the world, the scenery burn down. There's cause a huge think that. A lot of dialogue. I think I got most of the words on that one, though. Okay, are we done? Nope. I appreciate everything you and Mr. Edgeworth did for me from the bottom of my heart. Oh, that's right. Received a letter from Miss Von Karma. She said that after I get out, I should feel free to consult her about anything at all. Really thankful to have met everyone. It has become difficult for me in this country as of late. As such, I will take a short leave of absence. I would like to request my services. Be sure to visit my homepage. May we be blessed with longevity. So he has a website? That seems really stupid to do as like an assassin. Which, by the way, is actually a real life thing that happened. Please don't automatically advance the dialogue. March 23rd, 942 p.m. International Departures Gate 12. Okay. Yeah, there, there, there is actually a very famous thing where somebody put up a fake Hitman website and it actually had many people submit entries and that ended up catching hundreds of people. That is a real thing that has happened. Go look it up. <laughs> it's one of those things where I would believe people are, are dumb like in the Phoenix Wright universe and our, and our universe, but yeah. Dango says, but yeah, this last case I felt was a wasted opportunity. I think it would have been better if the client was the murderer and it was revealed on the last day. Um, I don't think I wanted him to be the murderer. I wish they played around more with the concept of being guilty or not guilty of murder. 
which they kind of did, but man, they just dragged it out with everything else that was like super not necessary. They did it in like the most forced way possible, literally taking a character hostage rather than it being a choice between his career and philosophy, which I think just kind of pales in comparison where we don't really make any important decisions ultimately. I think it kind of ruins their own message. Anyway, gate 12. Where are you going, Francisca? How did you know I was here? With this. That's... I heard you were planning things on a certain person. Things like tracking devices in his coat, for example. Hmm. That's just like you. I only planted it there because he was always wearing it. This... Filthy drab coat of his. I don't know how it ended up in my luggage. But it's going in the trash, I promise you that. Oh, that's right. Speaking of that man, he told me something very interesting. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. Four things? It seems he put the last one in his coat pocket. He put it in here. It doesn't matter anymore. This is already over. What are you going to do now? That's none of your business. Are you running away? Shut up. You don't understand a thing. You can't possibly understand what it means to be a Manfred von Karma's daughter. Francisca. So many expectations from everyone around me. Expectations I must fulfill. I'm expected to win no matter what. And failure? Such a thing is not an option for me. My father was a genius. There's no doubt about that, but... But me, I'm no genius. I've always known that. But I... I had to be one. I had to. Oh, this case is still going. Oh my gosh. I'm losing my mind. It, the case ended like 40 minutes ago, Chad. I'm like, I'm actually losing my mind right now. I'm so tired. Game, please wrap up in a reasonable time frame. I don't care about most of these characters. I'm sorry. <laughs> you had your chance. I don't care. I will voice them. But we are giving our opinion next time. I'm too tired to even give the opinion other than I've had enough of this case. I want it to end. You may not be a genius like your father, but... You are a prosecutor. You have been and always will be. No, I'm not. Not anymore. I've even thrown my whip away. Speaking of that, Wright gave me this to hold on to. Right. You knew something like this would happen, didn't you? I'm going to say this again. We prosecutors do not fight for personal honor or pride. Hope you will think deeply about what you should be striking down with that whip. You haven't changed a bit. You've always... You've always left me alone and walked on ahead without me. Miles Edgeworth. I've always hated you. And then, finally, my chance to take my revenge on you arrived. If I could win against that man, if I could make Phoenix Wright bow down in defeat, and this girl you left behind would have risen higher than you. That was supposed to be my revenge. I see. You know, I can't do it. I can't change who I am. I can't throw away everything I've been until today. I believe you can. Just like how Adrian Andrews did. Adrian Andrews? You were going to use her during the trial, right? But you... You were dependent on your father by using his tactics. Isn't that right? Hmm. Today, you chased after me, after I'd left you behind all these years. And that's why we're standing here now, side by side. But, I have no intention of stopping. <laughs> My chat, please. If you say you're going to quit your walk down the prosecutor's path, then this is where we part ways, Francisca von Karma. Oh, and she's crying. Ooh, that's a face I don't want to see. Ooh. I, I, I'm Francisca von Karma. 
Don't think I'm going to walk in your shadow forever. Our battle begins now. So you'd better prepare yourself, Miles Edgeworth. Is it going to end with her crying? That's also a really awkward scene to end on. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. One day, someday, I'm sure we'll meet again in battle. Until then... Oh, this is so painful. The last piece of evidence that never made it to you. Is it Maya's drawing? I'll take good care of this fourth piece. So I can give it to you. When at last we meet again. And then Phoenix has no idea what it is, because years pass. Where he quits being a prosecutor, or being a lawyer. That is certainly a face on the DeShelley card. Perfect mayhem! Perfect mayhem indeed. Welcome, Black Spidey. Thank you for the raid. Sadly, we are about to end, though. We have completed the game. Hmm. Well, you're saving content. I guess we will. So I guess there's nothing else to do with the game. We have... Completed the second one. I, technically, we still have the third game to play. No worries. We'll we'll talk. I'll stay a bit longer, Black Spidey, just for you. But oh boy, that that was a long, long trial that went on far too long. Chat. Oh my gosh. Who? <laughs> like... So I would say definitely, if we're gonna give some overall impressions while we listen to this music, let's chat a little bit. Thank you for the raid again. Uh, also, thank you for subscribing. So, from that standpoint... This was definitely one of the worst cases to end on. That was quite a bold choice of them to do. So, I guess the things that I would ask are, like, what I would recommend to have fixed this case. I really think the whole Maya subplot really dragged out the game for sure with that final case. And them saying, like, every five minutes, Maya's in danger. Oh, no, I have to extend the trial. What do I do? I have to buy time. The evidence will be here. Oh, no, he might do something if I don't do it. Seeing that repeated, like, 20-something times in that final trial did not help with the pacing of that case. Um, I think the investigation portions were mostly fine. So, overall, it's not the worst investigation phases we've seen today, or even in the game in general. So we'll say that. That's a positive point. I did like some of the freakouts. It's a shame they were kind of on the shorter end compared to the first game, but they were kind of nice. But yeah, I don't know. As I said before, that, the case just went on way, way, way too long. Like, <laughs> with ideally, I would have been finishing at 12, giving it, giving it about three hours to finish one part of an investigation into the trial. But no, it took like almost five hours because all they kept doing was stopping and going back and forth about the same points over and over. So it's like, oh, what a decision. I, I don't think for me it was anything where... Oh, let's just see what Dango said about the case. The Maya subplot killed it for me mostly because it felt like everything about it was handled very poorly. Yes. Yes. It didn't... It It, it just kind of... It, it was things that like could be interesting but just kind of weren't. And I think they try to explore the theme of kidnapping, at least in one of the spin-off games, that I think they did much better in terms of kind of like figuring your way out in a room that you're not familiar with and picking up clues. They did that much better in some of the in one of the later games that I did play. Uh, but overall, when it came to I mean, I guess the villain is fine. Adrian Andrews is fine. Yeah, the too dark to see perfectly lit room with the lamp right in the middle. <laughs> All that nonsense did not really make a lot of sense. But yeah, it's just kind of one of those things where it just really, really, really had so many things that were just a combination of contrived and a bit disappointing where it's like, I'm okay with like the team eventually coming together. I think some of the messages in the game were fine. Like, Phoenix finding himself in a case where he potentially has to get a not guilty verdict for somebody that is guilty, or at least defend somebody he knows is guilty, is at least, like, interesting in concept, but I feel like they really botched the execution, sadly. 
And I think the villain... I, I kind of actually didn't want the villain to get away with it, per se. I mean, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think, like, what I would specifically change at the ending of it. Like, I think it's fine to go back and forth between Adrian Andrews and Matt on guard. Like, that kind of thing where it's ambiguous, potentially, maybe for players that didn't figure it out. You know, where the culprit is going, etc. But when it comes to... When it came to pretty much everything with the testimony of the killer, the ridiculousness of the constantly adding new evidence, it just kind of overstayed its welcome just due to pure length, especially for me, as I was feeling it and I was like, man, they are just not getting to the point anytime soon. We're going in circles. And even the judge himself comments on what an unusual thing. Isn't this like the fifth time that happened? And I'm like, yes. Yes, you keep saying that. It keeps happening. The, the trial keeps extending. It's painful. But anyway, I think from that standpoint, I don't have too much else to add. I don't... I would have to think a bit more to fix the overall case. I, I probably would have removed the Maya subplot. I would have rather it have focused on Phoenix actually being confident at his job and deciding whether or not it's his job to defend the people that are guilty or not guilty without having like this ultra, oh, see, he had to do this because of this one thing as kind of an excuse later to avoid character growth, which I don't like that as a writing mechanism that it was in there. Yeah, so I mean, like, I guess what I'm gonna, I'm gonna state my wishes for next game. I hope the next game has way less spirit partners. I hope they just go away forever, to be honest with you. I would be much happier if we had people doing actual work I feel like um, Maggie got the bad ending and I would have rather picked her as a partner since she actually knew what things were. But yeah, this the game is pretty inconsistent with how it handles like evidence law, quote unquote, introduced in the first game, even though that was a retroactive add in. It kind of messes up the series in a way because of just how absurd everything was, in particular that last case of just completely ignoring the previous game's true final case. That they couldn't have touched it up for the trilogy or something to make a little more sense. I don't know. I'm disappointed. I'm hoping when we do decide to play the third game in the trilogy, that it is... I'm not going to say more grounded, but I really don't want it to be about spirit mediums. I don't want Pearl to be in it, to be honest with you at all. I don't think she really adds anything other than being kind of like a mascot character. And to me, I don't find her very endearing. So I'm like, I just want to focus on the case, honestly. And if he interacts with interesting people, that's nice. But her, her whole subplot and her whole gimmick, I'm just 0% interested in. I'm on the fence whether I would say this case is worse than the previous case. I definitely felt annoyed at both cases. This game was just kind of breaking me because of how long the final trial was. The other one just kind of made me uncomfortable. And even the case before that made me uncomfortable. Honestly, most of the cases. Surprisingly, this one didn't make me uncomfortable. But the other two did. So, I just think all three cases are just bottom three. I think I don't even want to rank them necessarily. For me, they are the bottom three of the cases we played so far. Welcome, Prismatic, please. So, I guess... I guess that's all I have to say about Phoenix right for now. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. So we beat Justice for All. Arguably, Justice was not for all. Arguably, there wasn't even Justice to begin with on some of those cases. We we definitely cheated. Von Karma was right. We stole her perfect record. We are terrible human beings. <laughs> Because we we went to we went to law school and decided that oh wait maybe sometimes they're guilty maybe I should have thought of that. I feel like we're incredibly inept at our job, which is insane. Given how everybody else in this, in this everybody else is in this universe, that's actually crazy. That's actually crazy that we're inept even by Phoenix Wright standards. <laughs> we're so bad at our job that I can't believe it. Like we're so bad, a prosecutor. And our former law partner coming back in as a ghost had to step in and help us. Like, it was bad. Oh, and the other prosecutor who got shot in the arm, who we also forgot was shot in the arm for some reason. Why was that a plot point? 
and then whatever you want to call uh gumshoes weird i'm a detective no i'm a cop no i'm on the investigation team no i'm a detective wait no i got rehired whatever you want to call that process i don't really get why that was in the game at all that didn't really add anything They needed to focus that game a little more, Chad. I'm just telling you, like, they, it could have been interesting. I would have liked to have seen Phoenix decide, you know, the fine balance between making sure, you know, somebody that is guilty receives a proper sentence versus just outright receives guilty or not guilty. And I think what somebody had said earlier, if, if it had been like kind of like a plea bargain thing or getting him to admit to something else, I know, granted, it might get technically a little more complicated than the game, but I would have been a lot more satisfied with that for sure. Like, if we made him take a plea bargain or something. But oh well, maybe in a future game, they'll bring up the concept of downgrading charges, plea bargains, whatever. But for now, chat, I don't think I have anything else to add to YouTube slash the VOD. So with that, I'm going to say, I guess it's time to say goodbye to YouTube. So if you did watch to this point in the video or the VOD, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Hope to see you again in the final thoughts, which will be on a different day since it is like 1.50 in the morning. <laughs>